It's week eight in the NFL Europe League, and we're in the beautiful and picturesque city of Amsterdam, the capital of the Netherlands, where the hometown admirals are entertaining the Scottish Claymores. Yes, hello and welcome to the Amsterdam Arena. I'm Nick Halling and I'm joined today by a man that's played the last 11 years in the National Football League in the trenches. He was certainly one of the biggest offensive tackles in the game. A lot of people tell you he was one of the best offensive tackles in the game as well. He is, of course, the former Oakland Raider, Lincoln Kennedy. Lincoln, welcome to Amsterdam. And I know you've looked at this Claymore's offense. It's struggled, and head coach Jack McNeil has clearly said enough's enough. He's rung the changes. That's right. Coach McNeil is hoping that a change at quarterback will change the luck for this Claymore team. So, therefore, Kurt Ains gets a starting nod today at QB. As for Amsterdam, defensively, they've really come on in recent weeks as well. Five turnovers last week, and uh, one guy has really jumped off the screen at you when you've been watching film. Defensive end Charles Austin, number 97, is allocated by the Atlanta Falcons, and he is playing at a superb level. Leads this defense with five sacks. Against a dinged-up uh, offensive line of the Scottish Claymores as well. So when these two teams met earlier in the season, it was a mud bath, and the Amsterdam Admirals won it by just a single field goal as the elements took over. We're hoping for more offense and more explosion today. Well, before we get to the kickoff, let's go behind the scenes and into the Claymore's locker room. Our Father, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, give us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not in temptation, deliver us from evil, for thy is the kingdom, power, and glory forever. Amen. Come on, man, come on, let's go. Get excited about it. Here we go. Just about ready for kickoff, but first, here's our sideline reporter Nara Wang talking to Amsterdam head coach Bart Andrus. Thanks, Nick. Coach, you had an impressive win last week against Cologne, but the team was eliminated from World Bowl contention. What are you doing to motivate them for the rest of the season? Well, you know, every time they take the field, they're adding to their resume, and they know that if an NFL team's going to look at them somewhere down the road on the, on the game film that they had here, it's going to be the last three or four games of the season that they pull out. I think they're motiva motivated enough to, to play on that. Great. Thank you, Coach. Good luck today. Right, you bet. Back upstairs to you guys. Thanks very much, Dara. And no doubt Jack Bicknell on the Scottish side of things has been saying exactly the same thing as well. There is no such thing as a dead game in American football, Lincoln. Not when you're trying to wait for the end of the season. And, you, and like Coach said, you're going to see those last games over there, and they're going to judge these guys on how they finished the season, not how they started it. Yeah, everybody's playing for a job. They may not be able to get to the World Bowl, but everybody is looking to their future here. And they're still looking to have some fun, Nick. There's, there's no doubt about it. Come out here and have some fun and, uh, and beat up with some guys while you have a chance. <laughs> <laughs> Amsterdam will get the ball first. And it's Chris Taylor who will field the kick from Jensen at his own nine-yard line. And Taylor is tripped up at around the 28-29 yard line. Gerald Dixon with a open field tackle, a return of 22, and that brings out Clint Sterner, who was playing for the Scottish Claymores, would you believe it, three seasons ago, went back to the Dallas Cowboys, hooked on with them for a while, now with the Miami Dolphins, and he's had a pretty good season here. In fact, he's looked a lot more composed under centre than he did three years ago in Claymores colours. That's right. Eight touchdowns, four interceptions for Sterner. And he'll start at the 30-yard line. Taylor is the motion man, and a bit of play action, and all kinds of razzle-dazzle going on, and they've managed to uh, set up the screen, but Chris Downs is demolished pretty quickly. The screen got ahead of the defenders there, so uh, Chris Downs was only going to go down. Nick Eason may have been the first man there, but he had a lot of help. The big guys up front, Branch, Brown, Holland, Beck, Volk, and Barnett for the Amsterdam Admirals. In the backfield, Chris Downs, Chris Horn, Wilson Thomas, and Chris Taylor, the wideouts, and Tony Donald from the Packers is at tight end. They'll give him three, maybe four, on the completion to Downs. So second down for Amsterdam. Sterner just puts it upstairs for Chris Horn, who can't quite reel it in. That's incomplete, and that's going to bring up third down and around six. The Scottish Claymore's defence slipped in the rankings from number one to number three after last week's loss against Frankfurt. Cedric Scott, Nick Easton, Alan Harper and Ivory McCoy up front. Howard Clark, Jimmy McLean and Ryan Myers at linebacker. And in the backfield, Alfonso Roundtree and Brad Franklin on the corners. Thomas Wright and James Lewis getting the start at, in, in the uh, secondary. 
and four wide receivers come in on third down for the Admirals. And Sterner will look to throw, the pocket collapses. Alan Harper was the first man there, Cedric Scott followed him up, and it's a sack for the Scottish Claymores. You know, they're not effective series for the for the Admirals there. I mean, they went, came out here at three downs, didn't really get anything started on offense. And I hope they need, to, they need to turn around this thing and get this thing going. Well, already just in that first series, we see Jeff Reinbold, the uh, special teams coach there for the Amsterdam Admirals, sending his punt coverage unit out. Alfonso Roundtree wants nothing to do with that punt, and it was a, dis a disappointing one for Nate from Nate Fixie as well. It's going to give Scotland terrific field position. So Jack Bicknell has rung the changes, and in comes Kurt Ains from the Detroit Lions. He was in camp with the Lions a year ago. They released him but said, we're going to bring you back, and we're going to send you to Europe. And hopefully he's going to be able to use his mobility today because, like we said at the top of the show, they've got a patchwork offensive line. Not a lot of guys in there that have been able to stay healthy. These guys are playing hard, but it's going to be a little rough for them today. And Jack Bicknell has concerns about his offensive line, which is missing Marcus Ogden, the left tackle, who's their best lineman. But good field position for Scotland. And Ains throws on first down, can't find a receiver. He was looking in the direction of Scott McCready, the Englishman, couldn't find him. Well, the offensive line has been the Achilles' heel, no question about that, for these Scottish Claymores. They've struggled right since training camp. Reese Hicks, Morgan Pierce comes in at right guard, Kurt McGill, Todd White, and Chad Ward switches from guard to tackle. Ahmad Galloway in the backfield, Bellamy, McCready, Haygood, the wideouts, Aaron Golladay is a huge tight end. McCready is the motion man on second down and ten. And they'll give it to Galloway, who's found a little seam, and will take it to midfield and pick up eight yards before he's tackled. Derek Combs and Willie Pyle coming up from the secondary and making the stop, and that's going to be third down and a couple. Take a look at this play. This is this play opens up right over the center's angle. Right here, look at that big hole. Anybody can drive through it. Anybody can drive a truck through that one right there, Nick. That's a good play. I know you'll be watching uh, the performance of Chad Ward in this game, coming in at left tackle. Not the easiest switch to go from right guard to left tackle. Third down and a couple. Ains, play action. And he finds Galloway, but Galloway had coverage all the way. Drew Walrus was not fooled on that one. No gain on the play, and the punting unit will come on for the Claymores. Darrell Wright, Buck Rasmussen, John Nixon, Clint Mitchell, the big guys up front. Drew Walrus, who just made that tackle. Jerry Schumacher, Ben Madavi are at linebacker. Ligarius Jennings and Derek Combs on the corners. Jason Perry, who's been around the NFL for a long time, and Willie Pyle are the safety men. Yeah, that was a nice job by the defense there. It's three and out, and we're coming up on the special teams play punt. It's uh, all you can do. I mean, just these two teams are going to be battling hard, and they're going to play, play good ball. Nick Murphy with another super punt, but Chris Taylor looking for a chance of a return here, and he'll pick up nine yards before he's covered. So, honours even so far. Defence is on top in the early going here at Amsterdam. We are scoreless. Welcome back. The Scottish Claymores playing the 100th game in franchise history. I was there for the first, Lincoln. They lost 19-17 <laughs> to the Ryan Fire at Murrayfield, Edinburgh. And I'm sure some of these fans were there watching that one as well. They've got yeah. a very, very committed audit, a fan base, the Scottish Claymores. I, I think American football has really taken off here in Europe, and it's, it's got a tremendous amount of success. It's a good thing. I, I, I really like it. I'm really impressed by the amount of fans that turned out for today's game especially. Yeah, and some Ryan Fire fans in the house as well. Jack McNell, of course, used to uh, coach the Barcelona Dragons before coming here a year ago. Anyway, first down, Amsterdam. Clint Sterner against his former team will go from the shotgun and not much doing on the ground there, although a good second effort from Chris Downs will probably give him about four yards. The man from the Oakland Raiders, your old team. Yeah, he's, he's going to be a Raider. He's going to try to impress the coaches out there in Oakland, and, and I know North Turner is, is really looking forward to this guy in camp. Of course, has he got the offensive line in front of him in Oakland now that well, you've gone? Well, that's a little bit hard, but you know what? In that last play, he just made the best of what he could, and he pushed forward for positive yards. I guess that's all you can ask for out of your running back. I mean, that's all he can do. Second down and six. Sterner will look to throw. He's got plenty of time, and he almost got picked off as well. Sitting back and just waiting for that one was Thomas Wright. And that was close. 
Well, Stern is going to take a look. His Turner is going to drop straight back, and he's looking all the way over here all the time. And he eyeballs his receiver. The corner just makes a great play. Watches the quarterback, waits for the release, steps in it, and should have been picked off for six. He was looking for Tony Donald instead. He almost got the man from the Tennessee Titans. Thomas Wright. Thomas Wright was just there staring at him, watching his eyes every way. Jack McNeil was saying this man's game has improved enormously since they moved into safety. Third down and six. Stern trying to get the game's first down, which he manages to achieve. At a 14-yard completion to Chris Horn. Alfonso Roundtree on the coverage, but it's first down Amsterdam. Clint backs up and he shows great arm strength right here. He's eyeballing his receiver all the way because he gets he gets man on man coverage and gets down and gets the first down. And that's a great play by the quarterback and communicate good communication between the quarterback and wide receiver. Court Chris Horn makes an excellent play there. Horn, who will go back to Kansas City in a couple of weeks once his uh, tour of duty is finished here in Europe. First down at the 35-yard line. The pitch back is to the man from Oakland, Chris Downs, and Downs runs into Thomas Wright, who covered a lot of ground to uh, sniff that one out. A gain of just a couple. Yeah, Chris Downs then didn't have anywhere to go. He broke into the open field, and Thomas Wright's playing a strong safety position, sitting right there make, waiting on him, makes a great open field tackle. Downs is pretty much it as far as the offensive backfield is uh, concerned for Amsterdam, although they did pick up Mike Milan. Uh, a week or so ago to uh, fill in for injuries. And of course, Milan was playing in Scotland last year as well, but they're pretty much uh, saying to this fella, you've got to be the workhorse for us in the backfield. <laughs> That's right. And if you go down, we don't have a lot left. Yeah. Second down and along. Play action. Cedric Scott read it all the way, and <laughs> Sterner just had to get rid of that ball to stay alive. Hey, Flynn has got to see this. I mean, he's got a definite blitz look. There's man coverage on the outside, and he's got a defensive end he knows is going to be unblocked. You... Clint can't make this. Clint can't Clint can make this mistake. He has absolutely no time. But and he comes out of his fake, his ball fake, and he's looking right in the face of a defensive end who's coming up the field who doesn't buy the ball fake, has nothing but to do to get rid of the ball, and hopefully, you know, don't get a penalty and don't take a sack. Cedric Scott from the Cleveland Browns has also received praise from Jack Bicknell for his work this uh, this season. Yeah, he said all his guys are still working hard, and this defense is incredibly stingy. It certainly is. The play clock had uh, got down to one. And Sterner looked up and saw that out. and said, right, It'll be a 30 second time stop out. the clock. And uh, one of the key rule differences here in NFL Europe is you don't get 40 seconds between plays, you get 35. The other big one, of course, is four points for the 50-yard field goal. But we always see t timeouts get burned early because of that play clock. That's right, because Clint went back to the huddle and he's thinking about, man, I should have got out of it, I should have checked, I should have changed, it's something like that. And while he's listening to the play, he doesn't realize the clock's running down. He gets to the line of scrimmage, doesn't have enough time. So he will go and talk it over with Bart Andrews, who is the quarterback's coach for the Tennessee Titans the year they went to the Super Bowl. Which seems like not so long ago, but it's about four years now. Not, it? Yeah, it hasn't been that long. But, you know, in talking to Chris Downs, back to the point you made earlier, Nick, about that one back being the worst workhorse, we were talking with Chris earlier this week, and he says he's not really familiar with having playing that one-back system, and he's trying to make the best of it. He's used to having a fullback and that power running game in front of him. It is the norm here in NFL Europe. Most base offenses are three wides, one back. Only Frankfurt really will play a two-back uh, set here. So uh, Chris Downs will be uh, dueling with uh, one or two reasonable names when he goes back to Oakland. Yes. Third down. Sterner. Can't find a man. Alfonso Roundtree's got it one-handed. That was one heck of a catch. Now he's looking for somewhere to go. And he's trying to turn the corner and is dragged down by Chris Downs, but a huge play from Roundtree, one-handed. He's great got the grab. pick. That was a great grab by Roundtree there. He's playing this receiver all the way. Clint Sterner comes out and he makes a mistake that he's been making earlier when this, when they got a hand on the ball the earlier time. Clint has plenty of time here. You see him jar the bass in there, and, and Roundtree just makes a great play on the ball with one hand. They were looking for Chris Horn. Roundtree was thinking, where can I go with this? Claymores know that Horn is, is Sterner's favorite target. They're going to be on him all day. Now Alfonso Roundtree from the Miami Dolphins picks off Clint Sterner from the Miami Dolphins. You think they'll be talking about that in camp? 
So here come the Scottish Claymores once again, and Hicks is uh, man handled after just a three yard gain. I mean, that was one heck of a That was a great catch. Alfonso I mean, Ralphie, that's, that's outstanding athletic ability. And you can you sit here eyeballing your quarterback like that. Look at that catch. He reaches out. He's in a place where Horn's supposed to be, and he makes the best of the interception. Great play, Roundtree. Certainly was. Great field position as well for Scotland in Amsterdam territory. Second down, Ains with a little bit of play action. Now he'll take off, and this is what Ains loves to do, and he'll plunge down at the 35-yard line, just shy of a first down, maybe just a yard short. This is the extra dimension that Jack McNeil with St. Kurt Ains brings to this offense. And this is hard for a quarterback to, this is very hard for a quarterback to do. You see Ains come out of his progression. He has nowhere to throw, nowhere to see. He just tucks the ball and gets positive yards. Close to a first down. You can't guard against that when you're a defense unless you assign a man to him like a spy, but you take him out of coverage. Now they've got the big receivers in. Rod Bellamy left, Haygood right. But on third and short, they'll go with Hicks and Maurice. Hicks will plough his way for nine yards and another Scotland first down. Ben Madavi will be credited with the tackle. Now we're in the trenches with a nice run and play. Hicks makes the best of the situation. The hole is clogged up up in the middle, but he breaks to the outside over the left guard and left tackle, gets up the field for a positive game. Maurice Hicks from the San Francisco 49ers. He negotiated his own deal there, such as his determination to get back to the league after being released by Chicago. Had a great first season here in Scotland last year. Getting the first down there. Ames has a lot of time, then just gets rid of it to Scott McCready, the league's leading receiver, and uh, Ames loses his helmet. He didn't have as much time as he thought he did. But there was it closed up to... fast, didn't it? It closes up fast, it always does. You see Ames as he takes his drop back here, and he's with, protection is fine right now. He moves around a little bit in the pocket, but you see right over the backside, Charles Austin comes in and makes his presence felt. You just watch his helmet go here. <laughs> that's a sandwich. Oh, Whoa. that's going to hurt. That's going to leave him. Get some, get some aspirin for the guy. He's gonna need some. That was a, a Darrell Wright, Charles Alston sandwich. And Ainge is probably still feeling a little bit woozy here. Well, he's going to go over to the sideline and check his chin strap and still make that's sure it, it makes connection timeout. both ways. Yeah, you got them. You got the trainers looking at it right now. Tani Fernandez, the equipment manager, jumping in there. So while they're in a timeout, we'll take a timeout as well. No score here, but Scotland threatening. <laughs> Kurt Ains will go back to Detroit next season, and he's going to have to try and uh, nudge out one of those veterans if he gets a chance. Yeah, they, the Detroit Lions picked up a Rick Meyer in this offseason, and I guess they're still wary to see if Kurt Ains can really live up to the competition. And that's one of the reasons why he came over here. He told us that Detroit Lions really wanted him to test their arm against the competition. You see he's the third quarterback there, and he's got to beat out Rick Meyer for, for a job on that team. You played with Rick Meyer, didn't you? Yeah, I did. I thought Rick Meyer is a great quarterback, and I think it's a good acquisition for, uh, for Detroit there. So let's see if uh, Ains can convert this second down. McCready is the motion man. The pitch back once again is to Maurice Hicks, and Hicks looks to turn the corner and just hit the hole hard. That's very committed running for the man from the San Francisco 49ers, who's like a man on a mission. I like that play. That's very good right there. That's, really, that's very nice because you take, you take a look here. There's a hat for a hat on, on the game. You see the block, lead block, and the running back gets up the field makes a positive gain only to get down there to the positive yards close to the goal line. If there's been a criticism of the running game of the uh, Scottish Claymores, it's that it's been a bit tentative, but Hicks really hit the hole and turned the corner there. First down and goal. Not an awful lot doing there on the ground. Ishida, this very impressive Japanese linebacker, who is certainly not there to make up the numbers, will be credited with the tackle. See, Ishida, he's trying to make a name for himself as well. He wants to show that they play just as good football in Japan as they do over here. Well, he's not looked out of place in this league, this fellow. There's no question about that. It's his second year with the team, and uh, he really is growing and, and developing in stature. He sniffed that one out, and he wasn't going to let Hicks get past him that time. So loss of a couple. The Claymore's effective in the red zone. Ains looks, pumps, looks, tries to find Golladay and just overthrows him. Golladay had a little bit of coverage, so it's going to be third down and goal. And talking with Ames earlier this week, he said that he'd much rather 
and rather than make a bad throw, use his feet and his mobility. He doesn't really have a running lane because it closes down by the defensive end. But he sees the pressure up coming up the middle and decides to try to get one in there to the to the end zone for the receiver. Scotland ranked dead last in total offense, but they ranked number one in red zone offense. Go figure that one out. But now in this area, you don't want to really make a mistake that's going to cost a turnover. Field goal is okay. Bellamy is the motion man on third and goal. A bit of razzle-dazzle. Bellamy's got the ball. And he is brought down with a crunching tackle from Jason Perry from the New England Patriots. The same Jason Perry that played for Minnesota and Cincinnati and San Diego. A lot of NFL experience there. He read that one all the way. And one thing about this Admiral, Admiral defense, their safeties are making far more plays than anyone else on the football field. Ainge throws shows a good fake, but it doesn't fool the safeties at all. Perry's right there to make the tackle. Nice hit, too. So Rob Hart will attempt the field goal. The league's all-time leading point scorer will attempt to add a 24-yard field goal to his tally of points, which he has done. So the Scottish Claymores are on the board, first of all. Jack McNell's team, 3-0 up. And, of course, 3-0 when these two teams meet is a little bit ominous. But it's early in the game. It's a good start. You can work off of a turnover. You get down there and score. But of course, last time they met, it was a 3-0 ball game, but that was on a, a mud bath of a field at Hamden Park in Glasgow. Todd Seavers nailed that 44-yarder early, and then the ground just started getting churned up, and uh, it was called the dud in the mud. Nobody could keep their feet. Well, Kurt Haynes made a good stab of it there. But Mark Jensen fell short. Offense is literally just bogged down. These two coaches are hoping that that's not going to happen tonight. And when both teams are struggling offensively, I can remember one time we played Kansas City in a downpour where it was raining, the field got muddy. Oh, yeah. Fortunately for us, we had a decent amount of offense, and these guys have been struggling for their offense all year. Didn't you just run that game to death? Just ran that yeah. game to death and just keep it. Make the defense stop you when it's like that. So Sterner, his interception has cost points, but only three. Kurt Ains talks things over with his head coach. We're expecting to see Tom Arth, the third-string quarterback, come into the second quarter for the Scottish Claymores. All these teams in NFL Europe will give the backups a little bit of a run. So here is Mark Jensen from the St. Louis Rams. Taylor and Combs are the deep men for Amsterdam. Combs to the left, Taylor number one to the right. Scotland on the board here first in Amsterdam. Jensen with the kick. Combs will field at his nine. And there's a bit of a hole there. And Combs has managed to take it all the way to the 30 before he is manhandled. A 21-yard return for Derek Combs from the Green Bay Packers, who came over to the NFL Europe a year ago. They asked him to convert from running back to defensive back. That's quite a switch. Yeah, it is kind of quite a switch. And we actually had him out in Oakland uh, a couple times in camp with us, and he's sort of learning his way around, trying to find a position on the field, and I think he just wants to make himself useful to his admiral comrades. Yeah, was active with Oakland a couple of years ago. They went to Green Bay, was active with them, does a bit of special teams, as we saw there with returns, but uh, the key for him is, is finding his peg and sticking with it. Now, first down at the 31 for Amsterdam. Stern up, picked off last time. All kinds of movement at the line of scrimmage, flags all over the shop. And Downs will pick up good yardage, just bounces away and gets past midfield. Now, there are flags down, but there was certainly a Claymore defensive tackle encroaching. It's a 24-yard run if it stands up. And, Nick, this is why you tell your offense to keep going, because unless the refs come in there and blow it dead, chances Outside, are that yellow flag is going to be on the defense. Number 96, defense. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a first down. Nick Eason is the man assessed. Carl Cheffers, our referee today. And any time you get a 24-yard run, you're going to turn down that flag every time. Absolutely. You're declining. <laughs> Had that stat. Get it, get, get it going again. Caught the big fella across the line. So first down Amsterdam in Scotland territory for the first time this evening. Sterner will go from the shotgun on four wide receivers on first down. And has a lot of time and just airs one out for Chris Horn. And Horn, has he brought it in? Great catch. Well, some of the Claymores are saying that was a trap, but the official has seen otherwise and said that is a 43-yard catch all the way to the two-yard line. 
Sterner sets up in the shotgun. He's got plenty of time. You see excellent protection, and he's got all goals down the field. Sees that the, they're playing a cover two defense. The Claymores are playing a cover two. Safety's not making it over in time. Throws the ball up. Chris Horn makes a great catch. That's a catch. No question. Some of the Claymores were saying, no, 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 he's controlled that with the ground. But you see that again. No, no, no. You saw he's how got his that. hands got under the ball, and he did, He trapped that ball against his body and made a great 72 catch. 72 reports as eligible. 72 reports as eligible. So they brought in Tyler Lender as a tackle eligible. So they're bringing in the big guns here. Wilson Thomas is spread wide to the left. Now he goes in motion, but they've brought in the heavy mob. Mike Milan is in the backfield as well, and Milan... It's a little bit of play action, and it's just over the top of his intended receiver, who is his tight end, Tony Donald. That's going to bring up second down and goal. Sometimes when you get down in this area, you want to show run, and you want the hopefully these defensive linebackers to bite. So at the snap of the ball, when Sterner goes with his play fake, he has his linebackers up there, he has a second option right over the top of them. It should have been a grab for a touchdown. Almost, but just let it get through his hands. The big man who has four touchdowns on the season. Tony Second. Donald's actually a favorite target for us. He just didn't connect on that last one. Second down, same formation. This time they give to Milan, and Milan against the team he played for last year goes nowhere. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. And that's going to bring up third down and goal. Right now, Tyler Lenders, number 72, who's his fullback, is coming back to the huddle saying, you've got you've to gotta follow me. You see, as Tyler comes around, he comes around the side. He's got to clear it off. But Milan hits the hole on his own, and he's on his own up in there with a bunch of Claymores on his back. Well, he's only been here two weeks, of course, and uh, it showed there, didn't it? Yeah, it did show lack of inexperience, lack of being in, being in this game with this time and with this team. On third down, Thomas again goes in motion. Now, play action. Time in the end zone. And it's juggled, and is it caught? No. Donald almost had a piece of that, but couldn't quite bring it in. He seemed, it seemed to be in slow motion there. He had it, he lost it, he had it, he lost it. And in the end, it hit the ground. We we'll see here as Sterner comes out of his fake. He, he doesn't want to throw to this offensive lineman, so he's trying to find his favorite target. Donald doesn't come up with the ball. Good call again by the officials. They've had to make a couple of calls on that series and got them both absolutely dead right. So that will bring out... The old man of this uh, Amsterdam team, Silvio Diliberto. Once a soccer player with Sparta Rotterdam. He won't thank me for saying this is... Uh, he's a 40-year-old now, but he can still kick. And he's nailed the field goal. A short chip shot, and we are dead level. A 20-yard field goal from Diliberto, but it was all set up on that big play to Chris Horn. You know, Coach McNeil told us earlier this week that... Most teams are thrown away from Brad Franklin, the cornerback who made that last play on, top, on uh, Tony Donald. And I know that Tony should have caught the ball because he had both of his hands on it. NFLEurope.com, of course, is the place to be if you want to find out what's uh, going on in NFL Europe online. Past, present, and future. Clint Sterner is steamed up about something. Now, what is... Uh, well, Sterner's never shy of letting people know what he thinks, and he is seething. Well, Sterner's adamant about it because... First of all, Ben Franklin gets away, and he say they, they, they think that he had the ball controlled before he fell down the ground and came out. From the replay, it obviously shows that he doesn't. The refs made a great call there. Yeah, there was no control there. It's a good point you made about Brad Franklin. I think Stern has calmed down now. But Franklin, we've seen for many weeks with Scotland, defenses don't even, or offenses don't even go to his side of the ball. Mind you, when we saw the play that Roundtree made on the other side, it's like pick your poison now, isn't right. it? Right, the way Roundtree made that play on that interception, you're absolutely right. But Coach Bicknell has told us that a lot of play, but a lot of people are thrown away from, from Brad Franklin on that side, and they're trying to figure out which corner they can pick on the most in this game. Now, this might be interesting. Herb Haygood, the return man for the Scottish Claymores, has had a sensational couple of weeks, including a 95-yard touchdown. They've tried to kick away from him since then. And they've got right underneath that, and Haygood will field at the 18-yard line. And it gets away from the first man, and is still bouncing around. It almost broke one. Willie Pyle watched him all the way, 17 yards on the return. But Haygood is having a similar effect to Dante Hall had, and ironically, they both ex or well, both Claymores, both with Kansas City. Yeah, Haygood's been all elusive since he started returning special teams. It's not a very deep kick, so he's right up in the reds immediately. And he, this is just sheer determination. He breaks the tackle, and he told us earlier in the week he likes to get back in the middle of the field because an old running back, he likes to be around bodies. 
Yeah, Dante Hall's going to have a bit of competition for returns. <laughs> when Haygood gets in there, although Haygood's going to have to go some to get Dante out of that position. First down at the 35, the pitch back is to... Well, that's a, a stumble there for Ian Smart. This is a miscommunication between the offensive line and the quarterback, and as, as well as the line communication, because Ains comes up there and takes his time, but you see the right guard, Chad Ward and Todd White are sitting there talking to each other. We don't see it from this angle, but as the running back gets the ball, he slips down and doesn't have anywhere to go because he has Knicks and a couple other admirals already in his face. Loss of three. Second down. Bellamy, the motion man. They'll go back on the ground again, and Smart is uh, manhandled, but we'll get back to the line of scrimmage. Smart is an interesting guy. They started him out as a running back, then they pushed him to wide receiver. They've had him returning punts, and that was a disaster. And, and you know, we talked about Derek Combs needing to find a home. So too does Ian Smart. What's his best position? Well, you know, it's really hard to tell. I mean, he just is look, he's just one of these guys that's looking for an opportunity to play. I think his best position is that running back. This is the but end it's really hard to find quarter. home. It's really the hard first, to find home for these guys. It is. It certainly is. The first quarter has come and gone. We have a tied ball game, three apiece, Amsterdam and Scotland. NFL Europe was great. We were able to go over and play. That's the most important thing is getting playing time. One of the top three experiences in my life. I started to have fun with football again. Kind of helped me grow as a person as well. And go over there and uh, kind of give me a stepping stone as far as being a better quarterback and then producing. And I got that chance in the NFL. The NFL Europe was one of the best things I've done for my career. Yeah, some of the big names that have come from this league that have gone on to big things. And the interesting thing is none of them really stood out when they were here. Well, I mean, that, that might have a lot to be said, but I think the overall, overall experience of coming over here and sort of riding that momentum into the season gives you a great leg up on the competition in the NFL. Well, so many of them say they get it now once they come through, through 10 weeks of here. Now, let's see if the Scottish Tables can get a... Very big third down, they certainly have. Scott McCready's got it in midfield. Looks to get away from defenders and will pick up an extra five yards. The man from West London is downed at the 42-yard line after a pickup of 21 yards. Will he pile on the tackle? I'm sure the Admiral said that they can get pressure with their front four. But you see McCready come, over, come open after he beats his man off. Comes over to the second level and a great pass by Kurt Ains. Gets it into the zone to where he has a left momentum to run. Run away from some guys and make some more guys miss. He's got sneaky speed, hasn't he, McCready? Yeah. He's not a burner, but he's sneaky. Four receivers on first down, and they go on the draw play, and Ian Smart will take it all the way to the 30-yard line. A pickup of 12 yards and another Scottish Claymore's first down. Again, Willie Pyle on the stop. Well, 3-3 three, three here in this game between two teams that really want to finish strongly and have had more than their fair share of bad luck. Both these teams can look at the previous results and say, yeah, break here, a break there, we could be in this World Bowl race, but woulda, coulda, shoulda, they're the easiest words in sport. That's right, Nick. First down. Smart looks... Sort of tiptoed to the hole and lost his balance a little bit. We were on that field earlier, Lincoln. It didn't feel that slick to us, did it? It didn't seem, but we're not out there running full speed like these guys are. That's but... true. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see me just want to run full speed anyway. <laughs> and a four-yard gain. It is churning up a little bit, but nothing like Hamden Park when these two teams first met when it turned into a, a cabbage patch. Yeah, they even got the roof open here, so it shows that it was a beautiful day. It's been a beautiful few days here in Amsterdam. It has. Yeah. A beautiful city at the best of times, but when the sun's shining, no, we're better. Ains looks end zone, and there was a miscommunication there. Looking for Ron Bellamy, but Ains went one way, Bellamy went the other. Yeah, but Ains was feeling some pressure by big John, John Nix coming up the center, coming up through the middle. You take a look, and Ains is setting his feet. He's sliding a little bit, but he set his feet. He sees the pressure coming. I think he just gets rid of the ball. I think that's a good play by Ains. Don't take the sack in this area because we can still try to get three out of it. We expected to see Tom Arth in the second quarter, but uh, Jack Bennell has clearly decided, no, let uh, Kurt Ains finish this drive. Big John Nix almost got a piece of him there. Third down and six. 
Haygood is the man shifting, and Haygood is the man who's going to get it on the end around as well, and he'll cut back to the 20 and beyond for another Scotland first down. Good second effort, will pick up extra yardage for Haygood, the man who calls himself the Weasel. Haygood is not playing like a receiver here. He comes around with a little reverse, and you see he's going to come over the top, take the ball from Ains, and now he's got just a sliver of daylight to get through. You see him making some people miss, cutting back towards the middle of the field, which he told us he likes to do. It's interesting when you look at this Scotland offense, which has struggled so badly, but Haygood's a playmaker, Bellamy can make plays. Maurice Hicks is a danger in the backfield. Scott McCree is the leading receiver in the league. They never seem to quite get it on the same page, though. And here comes Ian Smart. He just gets clobbered at the line of scrimmage. John Nix, I think, may have been the first man there. And you put big 300-pound John Nix against poor old Ian Smart. He's only 190 and 5 foot 8, and that's a mismatch. And this adds to the Claymore's problems with the makeshift offensive line. You see them trying to pull the guard around, but not John Nix beats his man underneath and gets big play on the, on the running back. No gain after Ian Smart. Ian had nowhere to go on that because John Nix was taking him inside out on pursuit angle. Nowhere to go but down. But Smart stays in the ball game. Play action. Ains rolls, looks, has McCready. McCready is chopped down immediately as well, pushed out of bounds. Don McGee will be credited with the tackle. He was in camp with Scotland. Creedy is just going to run a simple out. He's actually the check down route. He's not really expecting to get the ball, especially when he gets this close to the sideline. He catches it. He's looking in like, well, where am I supposed to go? <laughs> yeah, except, except hurdling. That's right. <laughs> get to practice your hurdle on the sidelines. Three of five on third downs, the Claymores. who had to settle for a field goal on their last trip to the red zone. Ains will want to finish this one with six. Pressure's coming. He steps up, finds Marcus Helfman, and Helfman is brought down real close to the line of scrimmage from that spot right on the five-yard line. They may just give it to him. Kenny Jackson was the first man there on the tackle, but the spot's the key here. Yeah, from this angle, it looks like it's close, isn't it? Now they won't bring out the chains. Well, the side judge from his position, that looked like a Scotland first down. But then the referee has got in there, and it's been pushed back a little bit. So it's going to be close. Remember, that's just a guide. Yeah. It's going to be real close. From that spot, it's going to be very close indeed. And just look at that. That's right. First down. And this is, this is really what drives the Admirals wild, because they do play good defense, but they just can't get off the field after third down. It's been what's been plaguing them all this season. They play very good deal on first and second down, but then they give up a play for a first down. They can't get off the field. They need to be off the field right now. Yeah, Scotland four of six on third downs in this ball game as well. You can't play good D if you can't get the other guys off the field. Scott Cooper, the Glaswegian, has checked in. He's wide left. Bellamy is wide right. McCready is in the slot. Smart in the Hands backfield. Off. They'll give it to Smart, and Smart looks to turn the corner, gets past the first guy and gets close, just short. They're ruling him down inside the one-yard line. I think that should have been a touchdown. It looked like Haynes got it. I mean, looked like Smart got it, got across the end zone. We'll see him. He'll take the ball here and have nowhere to go. Cuts it back all the way against the grain. Makes one linebacker miss, and I think that... Oh, no, his knee does go down before he gets the end zone. These officials are doing a pretty good job. They're doing all right. I, I, I figured I was trying to jump ahead of them. We're trying to trash talk them up here, and they won't give us anything. <laughs> <laughs> Second and goal. Smart again. Now, did he get in this time? They've ruled him down at almost the exact same position. And the officials immediately signaled that one as well. There was no margin for error there either. It's going to be third down and goal. You know, the only problem down here is when you have these wide open offenses, you really don't have any offensive lines that can get you any push. You see Ian Smart take the hand off in the backfield, and just like he did a play before, cut it back, and he did get stopped right at the goal line. I know Ad Admirals are looking for a goal line stand like they had last week against Cologne. Jack Bignell looking on, Bart Andrus wondering if his defense can hold. Third down and goal. The quarterback sneak from Kurt Ains. Is it in? No signal yet. Now it is. Touchdown, it Scotland. All you have to do is break the, break the line over the barrier, and I think Ains did that, did enough, showed enough for the referees to give him the touchdown. Well, Jack Bicknell said he wanted to ring the changes just to generate some consistent offense, give this guy his head, and it's paid a dividend there. You know, the Claymores are one of those teams that are that are under a lot of pressure with three allocated quarterbacks. 
but you know they really don't have anyone that they have too many choices to choose from. 64! 64! A little knot of Claymore's fans is uh, celebrating in the corner here at the Amsterdam Arena. They'll be cheering it further. Six blocks! Where did he come from? Don McGee's got it. And they're ruling him that he can't go and get the juice. But oh, Don McGee. Hey, Nick, you see here, special teams have got to make a play. A simple overload. A simple overload. And when the ball is snapped, they just rush in there like banshees. You see it? Every three, we got three guys in there that could have made that play, but special teams rising to the occasion, trying to step ahead and lead this pack. So Don McGee gets it. Jeff Reinbold's special teams unit comes up big once again, and he's back here in Amsterdam, having spent last year coaching special teams and tight ends at Louisiana Tech under head coach Jack Bicknell Jr. Ah, yeah, the Scottish Claymore's head keep coach's a family son. connection. Yeah. Huh? <laughs> well, we'll be talking about that after the game. Jensen with the kick. Combs takes it at the 10. And is brought down from behind. Not too much of a return there for the man from the Green Bay Packers, Jimmy McLean, who's playing all over the place this year in NFL Europe. Will get credited with a special teams tackle there. So, well, Scotland will be disappointed that the extra point was blocked. They've had trouble with their kicking game all season long. But at the bottom line is, they are getting a little bit more offense than they were getting earlier in the season. I know if they have to put their hat, hang their hat on field goals, they'd much rather do them as extra points rather than out the field for threes. Sterner stays in the game. Working from his own 30-yard line from the shotgun. Here's the rollout. Pressure comes, and Sterner waits, fires, has his man on the far sideline to midfield. A pickup of 20 yards to Alejandro Gámez from Mexico, who makes his first catch in two years of playing here in NFL Europe. So this is a moment he's going to remember. We see Sterner worked on this play earlier. Now he gets out of the pocket and breaks contained, and he sees a man coming open on the corner of the end zone, I mean, corner of the field, makes it for a positive game first down. And he was with Jack McNeil in Barcelona last year, so some of Jack's old colleagues are coming back to bite him today. Yeah. There's gratitude for you. But a first ever... Reception in NFL Europe, so congratulations to Gamez. First down, Sterner with a lot of time, and he's got another man, he's got another one to Gamez, who waits two years for a catch, then two come along together. He says, Gamez, you get open, I'm going to make sure you get, it, get the ball today, and I know he loves, he loves the attention out there. Well, that's 11 yards, and I guess the Scotland defence is thinking, oh, number 88, he never catches anything, and they're Gammes not treating him open and creates separation from him and the defensive back. He gets the ball on the sideline and makes a first down. Well, he's going to be setting the video on this one, this fella, isn't he? That's right, he's starting <laughs> up. Two catches, two first downs. Sterner stays in the gun at the 39. He's chased from behind by Scott and Damian Gregory and is eventually shoved out of bounds by Gerald Dixon. There was nowhere for Sterner to go except find the sidelines and run for his life. And Sterner shows that he has a little, mo a little mobility himself. Sitting back in the shotgun, you see Sterner... His, his protection breaks down. Mario Branch gives up the outside shoulder, and he has nowhere, to, no time for the ball, so he just takes off running, sees the open field, and makes a big play. Picks up four yards as well. The man from the Miami Dolphins. And uh, they may have a clock issue again here. But Andrus not happy. Well, these guys have got some momentum going. You don't want to, you don't want to sit there and slow down your, you don't want to slow down your momentum uh, with uh, with all these penalties and stop clock, clock stoppage. <laughs> clock stoppage. Clint Sterner, of course, went from the Scottish Claymores in 2001 to the Dallas Cowboys, where he threw four touchdown passes as well and went in on the ground himself. He has tasted the nectar. Ball's loose. And it's going to be... Franklin. And it's a touchdown for the Scottish Claymores. Brad Franklin picks it up, and that is huge. I don't know if he was down at all. Cedric Scott makes a great play from the backside, but I don't know if he was down. Uh, 
The referees don't see it, so obviously it's a big play for Franklin. You're not going to throw his way. You're not going to run his way either. This guy is turning to be a shutdown corner. 62 yards for Brad Franklin, and that has taken the wind out of the Amsterdam sails. The man from the Seattle Seahawks with a huge play. He's had a very impressive season, and he's capped it with a 62-yard fumble return for a touchdown. Now then, can they get the extra point right this time? Well, they're running over low right, the Admirals are. They're coming after the other way. Oh, well, we got all sorts of stuff going on. Don McGee, who switched over to the other side this time, took an early jump. Number 24. McGee's trying to get a jump on that snap, maybe get another block. Brad Franklin, was, he had, as Coach McNeil said, he, he's a shutdown corner. He's playing well there. Great scoop and score. And McGee just a little bit anxious, trying to get... Neutral zone infraction. Yep. Number 24, defense. The penalty will be assessed on the kickoff, five yards. You can go from hero to villain so quickly in this game, can't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he quickly turns four, around, now he's pleading this four. case. McGee's playing, pleading this case. So Hart will hope for better fortune this time. And he's nailed it. And this is just what the Scottish Claymores needed, but we do have flags down. Before he the, was in uh, the neutral zone again. He's talking that if the center is flitching, is drawing him off. The center is moving the ball early. That's what he's going off of. Offside, defense, number 24. That penalty will be assessed on the kickoff. The extra point is good. I think Jeff Reinbold will just need to calm Don McGee down a little bit. And the Amsterdam Admirals need to regroup in more ways than one. They are in trouble here at home. We take a look at that last play. Cedric Scott and Damian Gregory are playing in the backfield already, and these guys are trying to make plays on Chris Down. And I don't know, Nick, it looks looks like that right knee touches down before that ball comes out. It, it's close. It's really close, isn't it? Yeah, but you don't have the benefit of replay over here, so it looked like that right mm. knee just touched the ground. It's kind of hard to tell. It really is. Inconclusive indeed. I think even if they sent that one to a booth upstairs here, they couldn't, uh, the they couldn't sort that one out. Those happen during the different smart segments, play. and both of them will be enforced. The result is a 10-yard enforcement. The kickoff will be from the 40. Wow, that's interesting. Why would both penalties be enforced when the first one was nullified by the play? Oh, that's, that's a new one on me. Well, nothing working for Amsterdam at the moment. <coughs> Jensen will kick off from his own 40. And before he can get it off, we've got a whistle. I think they want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had the whole time out to talk about it. Yeah, I don't know if that was the right decision. I don't understand that one. But, you know, back to the play before, I think it was a great heads-up play by Franklin to take that ball and score and let the referees sort it out, which you tell your defensive guys to do. You know, any turnover, any time the ball's on the ground, you just pick it up and run the other way. Let, them, let the yeah. referees sort it out. If they make a mistake, you score a touchdown. Well, they're happy with uh, their decision, the officials. It will be a re-kick for Mark Jensen to Derek Combs on the left and Chris Taylor to the right. Well, we've still got the officials trying to sort having it. Having a little chit-chat there as well. They just want to know if they, you know, they're sure you made the right call. <laughs> There's about 30 claymores in this stadium, and you can actually hear them. That's how much this scoreline has silenced this Amsterdam crowd, which is the noisiest head-for-head -head in NFL Europe. Yeah, you see a lot of people sitting on their hands, and it's not just because it's cold. It's just because they don't have anything to cheer about yet. last that one right on the goal line for Derek Combs and Combs ran into his own man and then was uh, pushed down by Ivory McCoy a 25 yard return for Combs and this Amsterdam Admirals uh, offense has had the jitters this first half to say the very least Clint's made some clutch throws, and he's got the ball downfield, but, you know, th those mishaps like those turnovers will always stop you, and this one happened to be for a touchdown, so it was really de detrimental there. Two turnovers, ten points. It's a big turnaround. It's not the type of momentum swing this Amsterdam Ad Admirals offense wants. And it's put Sterner and his offense under some pressure. Less than seven minutes here, first half. They need to start generating something. 
Still has got a wide open receiver, and that'll be a first down as well. Lewis in on the tackle, but that's about it. His big tight end Kane Anderson coming up with that one. 13 yards, first down for Bart Andrus's Admirals. Yeah, and the Admirals have been moving the ball all day. It hasn't been a question of that, but like we said earlier, with the turnovers and the miscues, they're not able to get in the, in the end zone and putting seven points on the board. Well, they got the four wide receiver package out on first down. So Andrus is showing the Claymores a lot of different looks. Wilson Thomas goes in motion. A bit of confusion in the Claymore secondary there. Sterner manages to get rid of it. He's found Gamez once again, who goes from no career catches to three career catches in the space of five minutes. And it's a nine-yard game. It looked initially like the Claymores wanted to blitz, and the motion brought him out. You see a trip's left, and Gamez comes to the corner, and he just stays right there in that point. We said that Brad Franklin was not the corner to be messed with. That's so little mix-up, like you said, on a Claymore's defense, because they had two guys in the same zone. I like this guy's hand. How come they haven't thrown to him in 17 previous games? They've thrown to him three times here, and he's looked terrific. Well, maybe he went back and told his quarterback that he's been, you know, hasn't been covered and needs to get the ball to him. <laughs> <laughs> they all say that. <laughs> Second down and short. Downs. Flag comes in, and the flag comes in from the defensive backfield as well. We've got a couple there. Claymores applaud that, but we'll have to wait. Andre Ford got away with, well, didn't get away with it. He got, he got called for a little bit of a tackle. Carl Cheffers will tell us in a moment. There's the hold against Amsterdam. Second and short, you can make the first down, but then the flag comes in. That's a sickener. Well, when you can't throw to the guy, you see that Andre Ford is supposed to just grab. You see he grabs him around the back. Holding. Offense. Takes him down. Ten yard refs are going to call that every time. That's what they're out Repeat there looking at right down. there. Some, some are borderline, <laughs> and then you get one like that. Well, when you have the hand reach around the shoulder and the numbers all crumbled up, there's no, <laughs> there's no fooling in. And anybody. then you drag the guy to the floor just to be certain. Yeah, just to be certain. <laughs> Of course, Lincoln Kennedy never held in his entire 11-year career. As far as I can remember, I never held anybody. <laughs> <laughs> One day I'm going to meet an offensive lineman who'll say, yeah, I held. I uh haven't -huh, yet. Yeah. Second down, and long. Comes the blitz. Sterner manages to oh, he's overthrown. Downs, the pressure was coming, but Downs was there. Downs was the relief man, and they just couldn't connect. And whether Downs uh, did the old short arm thing or Sterner put it too high. Sterner has pressure, and his offensive line picks up the blitz, but he feels it. He feels it, tries to break the pocket, and puts just a little bit too much touch. Chris Downs is not the tallest running back out there, so it's a little hard for him to jump up and get that one. Yeah, he's a five foot eight guy, Chris Downs, a uh, Barry Sanders, so you've got to give those guys a chance. They're one of four on third down conversions, and this is a long one, third and 11. So Sterner will go to the gun. Amsterdam offensively struggling, and Sterner trying to make that change. Couldn't quite find his man. So incomplete looking for Chris Horn, the big play man, and the punting unit will come on once again for Amsterdam. And Brad Andrus will probably just think, well, let's try and get out of this first half at 16-3 and regroup, because not much has gone right for Amsterdam offensively. You're right there, Nick. I mean, these guys are really trying to push the ball downfield, and he had a couple of openings, but nothing that they can get with any type of consistency. Nate Fixke from the 49ers, and that's blocked as well. Howard Clark has got it for the Scottish Claymores, and down inside the five to the four-yard line. First down, Scotland. Would you believe this is a team that's only won once all year? They're dominating on offense, defense, and now special teams, too. Special teams is definitely making rise to the occasion. Let's take a look at the replay. He's, the punter seems to be taking his time with his initial drop and step. He gets blocked, scoop and score. It's a great play. And credit Fixie for actually getting back and saving a touchdown here because Clark thinks he's gone. Yeah, he's good. he thought he's got it. Picks the ball up and says, oh, man, I should have gotten in the end zone. <laughs> I let a punter bring me down. It's not something I want to hang my hat on. Well, Jeff Reinbold, an excellent special teams coach, is watching his unit have all sorts of problems today. And Tom Arf chucks it, checks into the ball game as we expected. Galloway will plow forward for a couple. Tom Arf from the Indianapolis Colts has thrown one ball all game the third string quarterback here and Jack Bicknell said he's worked so hard he's looked so good for us I'm going to give him a chance as well so in comes number 14. And like you said Nick he's allocated by the coach when you have three allocated quarterbacks 
these NFL teams back home want to see these guys on the field. You got to try to find some way to work them in. Impressed us with uh, his poise. We spoke to him about an hour ago, didn't we? And yes, we, we, did. we thought he'd have nerves and have the jitters. He was very cool, very calm, and looking forward to his opportunity to come out and play. Not a bad situation to be in right here. Doesn't get the play off in time. So he's a little antsy. He's saying, hurry up, let's go. Timeout, Scotland. That's their second try. So the timeout. Claymores have to burn It'll a timeout a there. 16-3. And this is a really big stand here defensively for Amsterdam. A 23-3 ball game it would be really ugly. Scotland trying to twist the knife. They're playing very hard out. The Claymores are making plays not only on defense and, like you said, offense as well. But when your special teams rise to the occasion and plays very hard, it's, a, it's extremely effective to beat the other team. Quiet these people down in the Amsterdam Stadium. Huh? Well, this is one heck of a noisy crowd, Lincoln. I've been here many times, and you can't hear yourself think. And uh, there's not been much for them to shout about. And Jeff Reinbold can't wait to get to his special teams unit. Bart Andrus needs to just get something for his offense going. They've been comprehensively outplayed in this game so far. Just making bad mistakes and, and, and turnovers are the name of the game here because these guys have not been able to capitalize on anything. It seems like everything that's going uh, the Claymore's way right now. So Arth will look to convert here. Second down and goal. McCready goes in motion. They'll keep it safe with Galloway on the ground again. And Galloway is spun around from behind. And that's great defensive hustle from the Amsterdam Admirals. Looked like Daryl Wright was the first man there, the big man. Wright's playing across the line of scrimmage. You see the line of scrimmage. What you tell your offensive line to do is just get a six inches and isolate and tie up a man. You see Wright comes under on oh, that. Pittman comes under and makes a play. It stands under the defensive, uh, stands under the offensive guard, sheds off the block and makes a play right in the hole. Thomas Pittman just coming off injured reserve as well. There's a man making up for lost time. He was in camp with a Claymore, so he knows these guys. Third down and goal. Will they? No, they'll pass this time. Arth oh, feels some pressure and a flag comes in. Arth can go in untouched, but is it going to stand gonna up? It's going to come back. It's going to come back. I want to say it's holding on Chris Ward or Chad Ward. The left tackle for the Claymores. The man filling in for Marcus Ogden. Let's see. Holding, number 73, offense, 10 yard penalty, third down. Oh, Doug, Cafu Doug Cafusi. He's just been activated for this game. He's a practice squad guy. You hate hearing your number called cool when you play offensive line. Now when you play like that, now he's a guard, so he, he's a guard who comes out here to play tackle. You see Doug set up, his hands are in good position, but now he's starting to lose it. When you grab the back of the jersey like that in the takedown, the ref is going to see it every time. Arth saw his moment of glory snatched away. Doug Corfuzzi with the flag and third and goal from the 14 now. And Amsterdam keep him out. Arth oh, has some time, puts it upstairs, looks for his receiver, it's overthrown, looking for Scott McCready, who had a defensive back draped all over him. I think it was Don McGee that had pretty tight coverage. And they're going to send out Rob Hart. McCready Bear gets up limping a little yeah. bit. He's hobbling a little bit. Might have twisted an ankle down there in that end zone. Don McGee's had a busy first half. He has really been busy on, on both sides of the ball. Uh, playing on, on the offensive side when they kick and, and shutting down receivers when he plays the defensive back. But that counts as a mini victory for Amsterdam. First and goal at the four, and they've kept him out. If they can block this field goal, it'll be a major victory. A 32-yarder for Rob Hart. It's on its way, and has he pushed it wide? Yes, he has. And that's a major victory for the defense there. Because the field goal was kicked from beyond the 20-yard line, the ball will be spotted at the spot of the kick. First down. Well, that is a signal for Scotland. They had a real chance to just twist the knife here. Amsterdam, hold firm. Look at that defensive push. When they're playing in CC McGee saying, shut him down, shut him down. Kicker gets up mad because he knows he should have had it. He got it off without it being blocked. Well, I wonder what the snap was like. We didn't get a chance to see it there, but Jack McNeil was saying that they've had problems with that long snap all season long. They put Marcus Helfman in there as a long snapper. He's a tight end, and he was really sort of told, you're doing the job, because they didn't have a specialist long snapper. Yeah, and it's often hard over here with the, to get your timing down when you're trying to allocate or put somebody in there at snapper. It's really hard to get sort of any type of timing, any type of consistency on special teams. Didn't look to be much wrong with the snap there. Hart just made a, a mess of it, and now another opportunity for Clint Sterner, who can't find Chris Taylor. You're not going to find him when you're throwing over Brad Franklin, but I mean, he's playing at a high level. I've never seen a corner over here play as well as he is, especially in this game. 
but something I said a couple of weeks ago, you know, everyone's talking about Alfonso Roundtree, and you can see why, because of that interception. But I, I don't see anybody ever throwing on this guy. It's, it's kind of like the words out, don't test him. Coach Pricknell has told us in the meeting that there is nobody throwing his way. I see why. Clint must have checked a more favorable play here. Second down, they're coming. And David Gregory almost got a piece of him, and that's almost a pickoff as well. Instead, there it is. Intercepted. It's intercepted. And the Claymores have got it again. Yep, it's been confirmed. Alfonso Roundtree has done it again. And they just have nowhere to throw the ball. You can't throw to Franklin. You throw over to Roundtree, you test him on the other side, and he comes up with an interception. That is a calamity for Clint Sterner against his former team. He's unhappy and he's protesting again. Let's take another look. This is a mistake by Sterner field, because he's... The ball was intercepted by Scotland. It will be first down. He's eyeballing his receiver all the way. His receiver has created no se separation. And Roundtree just takes the ball away from him. Well, Chris Horn, you thought, had the angle there, but Roundtree just steps up. So another chance for Scotland as we come on the two-minute warning. Self-inflicted wounds for Amsterdam on the ground with Maurice Hicks. Hicks looking to turn the corner, gets a big block from DeAndrew Rubin up front, and that might spring him for well, just short of first down yardage. And it's been the problem with the Admirals' defense all, all, all this season that their safeties are making more plays in the in the red zone or in the box than their, their linebackers' and defensive line. Warning. Bart Andrus just wants this half to end. It's 16-3 at the two-minute warning. There's been much for the Scottish Claymores fans to cheer about in this game so far. Their 100th game, and Ian Carey there, one of the uh, celebrated Scottish Cheddarheads, <laughs> letting everybody know this is game number 100. Yeah, I guess Green Bay has their Cheddarheads, and Scotland is the Cheddarheads of Europe. Huh? That's right. <laughs> and there's one of them. He travels everywhere. If there's been 100 games, he's seen 90 of them. <laughs> so, first down at the two-minute warning here in the first half. Tom Arth. Working from the spread formation, the four check wide the receivers with Hicks in the backfield. The give is to Hicks, and the draw play doesn't fool Amsterdam. Jerry Schumacher was all over that one. No gain, second down. Yeah, Nick, a lot of times when you have these check-with-me systems, they're running a lot of these one-back offenses. A quarterback might see a hole, maybe a little, you know, a little bit more bigger, bigger of a hole with the linebacker playing deeper in some areas than another. He tried to give his running back a chance, but there was just nowhere to go. Schumacher made a play. This Amsterdam defense has been on the field a long, long time. And they're still playing tough. They're playing with their backs to the end zone. They're their end zone very close. Second down and 10. Arth has good protection, has a man as well. McCready is brought down after an eight-yard game. Don McGee on the tackle. We seem to be calling McGee's name just about every other play at the moment. McCready gets up a little bit hobbling again. You see McCready is going to come out here, and this is what we were talking that Clint Sterner's not getting. He's not getting any separation from the, the receivers are not getting any separation from the defensive backs for anywhere for the quarterback to throw. And McCready gets separation there and makes a big play. Five of eight on third down. Third down and two. They've had four turnovers. 16-3 is not a good enough tally for four turnovers. They'll be looking for more here, Scotland. Inside the final minute of this first half, Arth with a deep drop, then finds Hicks. Schumacher's on to him, but Hicks has got a first down and stepped out of bounds. So job done. Perry came over, Jason Perry, the Patriot, to push him out and punish him, but he's, it's a first down for Jack Bicknell and the Claymores. You see Arth comes out with a fake to the running back, and he, give, he actually gives it up to, to... He actually gets it on the outside, but there's really no way to go. And again, this is this is what we're talking about with the Asper Admirals defense. They're really not making a play on third down to get off the field. First and goal at the nine. 40 seconds left in the first half. Scotland with one timeout remaining. Cooper checks into the game. Wide left. Rubin, wide right. McCready in the slot. And Arth will take off. And he's found a little hole there. All the way down to the two. In fact, he's been marked down at the three. Charles Alston will be credited with the tackle. Timeout, Scotland. And Scotland take their last that timeout. Their we see a mistake timeout. here because you have an outside blitz by the, by the defensive back. And Arth sees a hole open up right through the center, takes it downfield and almost scores a touchdown. Alston saves the touchdown there. We haven't called Charles Alston's number too often tonight, have we? One of the no, guys he's you, been limited. You identified I mean, him and... And yet they've just not been able to make a play defensively either. They just they? can't get off the field after third down. I mean, even in the last series, you see them 
play two good downs, two solid defensive downs, don't really get that much movement. The Claymores don't. And then the next thing you know, on the third down and short, they get the first down. But they took their last time out there. The ball spotted at the three, 31 seconds remaining. Well, this has to really be a favorable situation for Tom Arth. I mean, he comes in the football game and he gets the ball in the red zone both times. <laughs> but they've yet to get a point. Yeah, but he's but he's awfully close and he's feeling the momentum is swinging. It's definitely behind him, so he's looking forward to trying to put it in the end zone here. Darrell Sims, in his first year as defensive coordinator, has watched his admirals get pushed around all over the field. Second down and goal from the three. What's Arth going to do? He's putting it up for DeAndre Rubin, and it's almost picked off. Yeah, Arthur, no chance of the completion there. Derek Combs had that read all the way. Arthur actually thought he could take advantage of one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. He sees he has Combs by one-on-one, -on -one, tries to throw the ball up, or hopefully he's thinking that only his receiver can come down with the football. But Combs makes an excellent play one-handed. A lot of one-handed grabs out there today. They don't want to settle for a field goal here. They've had one missed. They've had an extra point blocked. Scotland's got to think six. Amsterdam, defensively, have held up pretty, pretty well in the red zone. So this is a big play here, third down and three. Half looks, puts it up for grabs. Marcus Helfman can't bring it in, but we've got flags all over the place again. Yeah, we're going to get defensive pass interference there. And quite possibly on Jason Perry, number 33, who was in the mix of that. What's gone right for Bart Andrus in this pass game? Pass interference, number 53, defense. The foul occurred in the end zone. The ball would be placed at the one-yard line. Automatic first down. They called it on Drew Walrus. You see, Drew's trying to plead his case to the referees. He gets his hands up, but his hands are on the man while the ball's in the air. That's going to be defensive pass interference every time. The former Philadelphia Eagle assessed. First down and goal at the one. But the clock's the story here. If they run it in and get stopped, they may not get another play. Arth slips, stumbles, and he's brought down, and that's a huge sack. What a play from Jason Perry. They got to hurry up and get to the line and try to call a play here or throw the ball in the ground. No timeouts. Arth will just spike it with eight seconds left. Yeah, this is just this just comes from a chance of really not getting out there and having a chance to play because he's got a blitz coming from the outside. He doesn't see it. You get first and goal at the four, and you get nothing. You get an interception in Amsterdam territory, and right now you've got nothing. It's one thing to get them to the turnovers. You've got to put some points on the board. They've had four turnovers, so far 10 points. That's not enough. Well, I mean, it looks like they're going to try to get one last play off of them. Being this close to the end zone, they can try to throw the ball downfield for one last play, and if they don't get anything, come back and try to kick a field goal. Herb Haygood has checked in. He's wide right. From the shotgun, Arf doesn't have a lot of time. Looks for DeAndre Rubin, and that is broken up. And a superb defensive play there for the Scottish Claymores from Brian Mance, who's only just joined the team this week from Cologne. And they will have to settle for a kick. Yeah, Mance is reading Art's eyes all the way. He gets a little bit of pressure and doesn't get as much as he wants on this ball, but tries to drill it in there anyways. Is that Austin with the hit on? I, I, didn't, I didn't get a chance to see if that was Austin. So Tom Arth, unable to penetrate the end zone. And Mark Jensen, who has yet to convert a field goal, will attempt this one. And the snap has been botched. They've had snap problems all season long. That one, the worst of the lot. Twice field position in Amsterdam territory, no points. Scotland have the lead, but it could and should have been so much more. Well, it doesn't matter which kicker they come in with, because right there they come in with Mark Jensen, and he doesn't get it done. The good news for the Scottish Claymores, they've got the lead, 16-3. The bad news, it could have been a lot better. Amsterdam are still in this game, but it's the Scottish Claymores that have dominated without converting their dominance into points. Nevertheless, here at the half in Amsterdam, they lead it 16-3.
Welcome back. Well, the Claymores started the second half by going three and out. So we'll pick up the action on Amsterdam's first possession of the half. Gibran Hamden from the Washington Redskins checks in. First down. And they'll stay on the ground with Downs, and Downs has skipped away from one tackler and is now heading down the sideline and finds himself a hole and is inside the 15. What a great run from Chris Downs. And he did it pretty much all on his own. You're right there, Nick. He gets to the outside. He makes a lot of people miss once he gets into the secondary. Let's take a look. Chris Downs gets the ball and comes around the corner, and he's got nothing but daylight. A little bit of a block there by his receiver, good block by his receiver. You see, and he cut it right back across the grain because he sees the safety Carter and the rest of the defense backs coming after him. And he makes some people miss there. 33 yards for the man from the Oakland Raiders. You see a guy like that, don't you think, yeah, maybe I'll come out of retirement, Lincoln? <laughs> <laughs> Not enough of that. <laughs> First down, Hamden with the handoff. Downs doesn't get much going uh, on that occasion. Stopped early, just a couple. He tried to run a little misdirection play here with, with a branch lead in the way, but he doesn't fool the, the uh, Scottish Claymore defense. You know that uh, open running back situation as well as anybody. Has Downs got a shot at making that roster? Well, I mean, he might not necessarily have a shot at running back, but he might be able to make it special teams. They're always looking for good special teams players. Second down. Here's the very rangy Gibran Hamdan, six foot five. The quarterbacks are getting bigger. And he's thinking end zone. Chris Horn's got a touchdown. There is a flag. But it's a touchdown for Chris Horn. And if it stands up, it's his first of the season. He was working Jermaine Chapman. Well, let's check out that flag. And looking from the... Illegal uh, contact, number 27, defense. Chapman is assessed. That it's a touchdown. Declined. The result of the play is touchdown. And just like that, this game has been turned on its head. It looks like they found somebody to pick on. They're going to pick on number 27, Chapman from the Claymores. And you see Chris Horn is coming down the field, and he's going to he's just going to run a simple out route. He loses Chapman right there, gets some decent separation, not good separation, but that's a tell you what, that's a great pass by Hamden to put the put the ball in the numbers. And Silvio Di Liberto will attempt the extra point to pull them to within six. Let's go, let's go. And that's it. And now these fans, who, as uh, Lincoln was saying, were sitting on their hands through the first half, well, now they've got something to shout about. Fixie with the kickoff, and he'll just try and put something under that. DeAndre Rubin will field at his 10, and he's got nowhere to go. Fixie did his job, just got that ball to hang in there. Four yards on the return. It would have been so easy just to boot it through the end zone, but that is a much smarter play from Fixie. He hung it up there, so the coverage unit got down, and DeAndre Rubin just had nowhere to go. And once again, the Claymores are going to have a long field, and they've stayed with Tom Arth, and I'm a little bit surprised because offensively, you, you just got the feeling Kurt Ains got them going. Yeah, that's right, but I mean, Tom Arth, just like Coach McNeil said, he's going to switch quarterback, he's going to give him a chance to play, and Arth hasn't really had a chance to open it up. We'll see what he does when he has a chance to use a whole, a lot more of the playbook than he has already. Well, this, this Amsterdam defense is fired up now. They'll go on the ground, Maurice Hicks has found himself a little seam, and that's exactly what the Claymores wanted offensively. 12 yards, first down, a chain mover, Jason Perry on the tackle. And that seems to be the fourth consecutive run of the second half, and we see that these the Claymores, even though they have a wide open passing attack, and I know Arthur wants to throw the ball, they're going to hand it off and try to take a little deflate the wind out of this defensive uh, this defensive front real soon. Saw Jack Bicknell there with Vince Martino, who's uh, his offensive coordinator. He takes care of the line play mainly. Upstairs here we've got Sam Ratigliano, who sends in the plays. The former Cleveland Browns head coach on first down. It's the four wide receiver package in, and they'll try and run the draw, and they've done that once too often. The Admirals are reading that one now. Yeah, they had a blitz come on there, and Hicks had nowhere to go, and Haygood could not get up underneath the block. Sam Ritigliano to the right of the screen there, not the guy that's getting on the telephone. That's Dan Daniel, the defensive coordinator. That's Sam, the former Cleveland Browns head coach, and he sends in the plays. Both of these teams and both of these guys like to use a wide-open attack. 
and they're going to try to spread the ball out but we see more runs coming especially trying to run out this clock second and long you think they might open it up from here well it's the same formation that they ran the draw out of last time they're going to go for it again no they're not play action and Arthur's going to have to run this time he's looking for a blocker and Arthur's got a huge run here he's to the 40 and still looking for more that was a gutsy run from Tom Arth what a play well we talk about Kurt Ames and his ability to scramble but Kurt and Tom Arth just run for 39 yards <laughs> He's definitely trying to make a play, and I see he comes out here, he has nowhere to throw, he just tucks the ball. Sees he has nothing but green in front of him, so why not? The quarterback's rumbling and stumbling down the field. And I thought he was going to go down here, and he thought, no, oh, I've got another five yards ahead of me, and he paid the price. He doesn't have a chance to play. You think he's going to go down in this situation, he's going to take some shots and show that he really wants to be in. But doesn't that fire up the guys around him, that he takes the hit rather than slide? Absolutely, absolutely. Shows your quarterback really wants it as bad as you do. First down. They go back on the ground. Hicks is corralled from behind by big Daryl Wright, and he got some help. Daryl Wright played that way, played that play very well. He clung, clung, climbs down the defensive end, side of the line, offensive side of the line, and he keeps Hicks from having anywhere to go, whether inside or out. He's still catching his breath. Look at this fella. <laughs> I wonder how Jack feels about seeing his quarterback scrambling around all over the field like that. I'm sure he's probably saying he'd be better get down. <laughs> well, Mike Jones, the Frankfurt head coach, comes up with a great line about scrambling quarterbacks. When the dogs chase traffic, they get killed. But sometimes they just can't resist it. Now Hicks, well, again, getting a little bit predictable there offensively. Drew Rawrus sniffed that one out, and that'll lose a couple, and it's going to be third and long once again. See here, the Claymores are still trying to stay with the run. As soon as Hicks gets this ball and it starts to get downhill, there's nowhere to go. There's nowhere to run. The linebackers, and you see Mondavi, you see Austin, you see them playing on the opposite side, on the offensive side of the ball. They've lost a couple, third and long. Let's see what Arth does this time. Well, he's got time and he pulls it down, and he's gone down again. Well, the first man there. Nearly got mistake. him, Thomas Pittman. That's a mistake, we got a ball on the ground. The whistling it down. That's a mistake by Arthur. He, I know he doesn't really want to play like that when he gets in there and he gets a chance to throw the ball, but. Well, Pittman didn't get him, but Darrell Wright did. The quarterback's just got to know he's got to get rid of it. He pulls the ball down and now he's got to tuck it away. You can't, you see how loose he's playing with the ball? Now the ball's on the ground. It should have been called a fumble. So Nick Murphy. Will punt it away. And they're coming after that, and they've got a piece of it as well. Wilson Thomas with the block. A great field position for Amsterdam. And when everything went right for Scotland in the first half, you thought this is going to turn into a blowout. But so far in this second half, everything that could go wrong has gone wrong. It's becoming a tale of two halves. We see Thomas run right around him, and he's just going to get right there, right. As the ball is placed on the punter's foot, he's just going to knock it right down. Comes up with a big block. Takes out the punter there, too. It's Clint Mitchell with the recovery, and Murphy's had a tough one. And Wilson Thomas had a touchdown last week. had a very quiet season, just waiting for his opportunities. And they'll keep Hamden in there. Well, he sparked it last time. Well, let's see what Chris Downs can do. And Downs has suddenly got a, a new spring in his step here in this second half. He had a big run to set up that first run. Well, these admirals are fired up. I mean, Downs gets the ball in the second time, just like he did on the series before when he turned down and made big. And Downs comes out there and he makes a big run. He gets a positive gain. Now they're second down and short, which is definitely the type of field position and hand he wants to deal with and the type of results that he wants to look forward to. Second down and three. And all that's in and out of the hands of Chris Taylor. And Taylor really is, is the one part of this Amsterdam offense that just has not been getting involved so far. If he does get involved, watch out, though. He's productive. He's been very quiet so far. I know that Hamden had a, had a good tight spiral on that ball, but he could have probably placed it a little bit more in his chest to give his receivers something to do with it. He talked about third downs on defense being a problem for Amsterdam. Offensively, they've uh, not been their best either. Now the Admirals haven't really been able to put together too many good drives yet. So let's see if Hamden can keep this one going. Third down and three from the shotgun. Got a lot of time. And he's found a receiver, and Horn will move the chains. 
Horn thought he was going to go and scamper away for a few more, but Roundtree managed to trip him up. 11 yards when they needed three. First down, Amsterdam. And Gibran Hamden has really played with a bit of poise in this third quarter. Well, we see when Hamden gets the ball at a shotgun, he's going to just eyeball this, these two receivers. Chris Horn's running down the field and, is going, and just going to run a simple out. Gets the ball in just with enough time for Horn to come up with a big play in the first down. First down at Scotland's 38. Downs gets the carry. Downs will push it to the 35-yard line before he is gang tackled. Disappeared under a, a wall of white and blue there. Might have been Big Alan Harper in the thick of that one. Second down and seven. Scottish Claymore defense is going to start to get a little more stingy as they get down. I know they're frustrated because they've been on the field this so far this half than they did in the first half. Well, they didn't have much to do in the first half, did they? I mean, no, they were pretty. They were pretty much off the field for most of it. Downs, meanwhile, is starting to crank out some pretty good yardage. Second down. Amron, Amron will throw. Downs with a catch this time, and he gets away from the first tackler and will pick up 11 yards before he's tripped up by Gerald Dixon from behind. But it's another first down to Scotland. Yeah, Hamlin is throwing really safe, conservative throw. He's got a great pocket in front of him. No one is even close to him. Gets the ball to Downs with something to do with it, and he makes some people miss, gets some extra yards at the end of the catch. Well, Washington threw uh, Hamden into the uh, Week 17 game last season against Philadelphia just for a little run out, just to see what he would do. And then sent him over here, and he, he plays within himself, doesn't he? A tall, strong arm quarterback that's playing pretty well right now. And he's found it. Oh, that should have been a catch because he had Chris Taylor wide open. The pump fake froze Scotland. Horn got open and couldn't pull it in. Taylor comes across the middle, and I think he starts to hear footsteps from Carter. We watch Taylor come open in the second, and he see. I, I know he's looking right at Carter coming in your camera angle right there. He see. He hears footsteps, and he doesn't hold the ball. And maybe Roundtree diving in front of it like that might have just uh, distracted him a little bit. But did Chris get, Taylor would have loved that, that one ball? I didn't see if he got. No, a I hand don't think he got a hand, but uh, I think uh, Taylor may have just looked away. But again, a terrific throw from Hamden. He stands up now. We'll try and take off, and he's got nowhere to go. Down he goes. Durant Roundtree will get another sack, his third of the season. And that's just what the Claymore's defense needed. A little boost to get those guys going a little bit. Pocket collapses around him, and even though he's in the shotgun, Hamden still has a little bit of time. Looks down the field, coverage is good. That's what you call a coverage sack. Quarterback had nowhere to go with that one. Seventh round draft pick of the Washington Redskins. Shabron Hamden, Jerome Roundtree. Trying to hook up with the Colts. He too is in camp with Washington, so these two guys know each other. And now Hamden's going to go down once again as the pressure came. And this is all defensive line here. This is great defensive line play. Gavin Walls with some help. Both round trees and walls, they're playing in the backfield, rising to the occasion, trying to make a name for themselves and say, hey, you know, the Admirals don't have the only defensive line, defensive ends over there rushing hard. We've got some pretty good ones ourselves. So they have to go for a 49-yard field goal. Well, they nailed a 44-yarder with this man here, Todd Sievers from the Houston Texans. That was the game winner when these two teams first met. What's he got here? He's pushed it wide right. And maybe the Amsterdam revival has stalled as well. Just when you thought they were building up ahead of steam, they've come up empty. Scotland hold firm. It's still a six-point ball game here in Amsterdam. On the ground they go with Ian Smart, who will pick up seven yards. And doesn't this just illustrate what we were saying right in the first half, that these two teams can't go to the World Bowl, but they only know one way to play, and that's play hard. That's right, and we see right here, Ian Smart gets the ball between the tackles. And when you have a matchup like that in the offensive line with the defensive line, a hat on a hat in the box, positive gains usually come from the offense. But they're on 46, second down, and a long three. Herb Haygood is the motion there. And nothing doing there. Amsterdam are uh, reading these misdirection plays of the Scottish Claymores all the way. They're going to no have to take game. one of those and give it to Haygood because if the Admirals aren't going to respect it when he goes around that end around, then they have to hand him the ball. They read that all the way. Drew Walrus, who was in camp with the Eagles. Herb Haygood is one of those big play guys. We've seen it on returns. 
And the other big play guy, Ron Bellamy, is wide left now, and they've not got him involved in the game at all. We got a pass coming up here. Half looks, and he's got his man. And it's a completion, and it's a tough one for big Aaron Golladay, the other man from the Kansas City Chiefs, who is such a load at 285. I'm all surprised they don't try and get the ball in his hands more, because when he starts moving, watch out. And it's great to see Golladay is going to be the, the tight end right there, and he's a big target for off the throw to. You see him to create separation off the linebacker, gives Arthur target, he gets down the field for a first down. Rumble, big fella, rumble. <laughs> well, if you want a blocking tight end, there's your guy. Yeah, he's a good size. First down, Arth with the handoff. Smart runs into a wall of orange and goes down. A loss of a yard. It's kind of odd to sit there and well, run we the draw about so Hay much. Herb Haygood coming from Kansas City and Aaron Golladay coming from Kansas City as well, because the Chiefs always seem to send good players over here and they get a result. Willie Pyle and Chris Horn, the guys from the Amsterdam Admirals. Nobody sends more team players to NFL Europe than the Chiefs and they always seem to get something out of it and that's no coincidence they show that they truly believe in the system over here you'll have to say two words Dante Hall <laughs> second down play action off puts it upstairs for Bellamy and it's incomplete Bellamy wants a flag but he's not going to get it Brian Mance had pretty good coverage Mance just joined this team this week because of injuries to Nashville Dyer but the guy that's been on the practice squad of the Clone Centurions has made a couple of plays in this game so He's far. He's been making some big plays, but I tell you who's the playmaker is, is Ryan Nix, who comes around and he lays one on Arth right in the sternum. If you want to sit there and hold the ball that long, QB, you're going to pay for it. <laughs> so that's third and long. Big John Nix from the Cleveland Browns. He played... Uh, it's part of 30 games in two years with the Cowboys as Arth puts it upstairs again and that's picked up by Drew Walrus who comes up with the one-handed pick. And Walrus has got some space now as well. Haygood eventually brings him down. But you could go a whole season without seeing a one-handed interception. We've seen two now We've tonight. We've seen two, but I know Nick and Brian, I, mean, I know Arth made a huge mistake, threw it to an area where no one, nobody, especially no other receivers are at. The balance of power shifting here in Amsterdam. The Claymores are struggling. You know, Nick, I'm wondering exactly what Tom Arth was looking at because he has a lane to throw it down the field, and he just seems to toss it up there. There is no receiver in that area. There's no one from the Claymores in that area except Drew Rollins, and he plays for the Admirals, and he makes a one-handed grab. There's some athletes on that defensive side of the ball. So four miscues for Amsterdam in the first half two here for Scotland in the second half Drew Walrus with a great pick the man who was in camp with Philadelphia last year he's a free agent here as well so there's a few teams going to be looking at him with plays like that and it's first down in good field position for Amsterdam who stay with the man from Washington Gibran Hamdan who calls a timeout and it, it, it's a kind of fluke that Gibran Hamdan is playing this game anyway because he was over in America with his family when the Gulf War broke out, the first one in 1991, his family lived in Kuwait, so that you know they couldn't go back, and they just stayed. And uh, his dad got a job. He grew up playing this game, and here he is. It seems to be making the best. Seem to be making the best of effort, a chance that he's got to allocate, being allocated by the Redskins to make a name for himself over here. Isn't it great? A guy grows up in Kuwait, goes to America on vacation, ends up staying, and ends up coming to Europe and playing in Amsterdam before he goes back to Washington. I mean, I mean that, is, know, that is some geography. And also something I like is the fact that he's a tall quarterback and he gets to see over a lot of his offensive linemen, which is a great, a great asset and a great key to the tool to have over here. First down at the 46. Hamden will work from the shotgun. Play action. And he puts it up, and he's got himself a wide-open receiver as well, and Tony Donald makes his first catch of the night, the big tight end, good for 22 yards, first down, Amsterdam. I got to think these two guys, these two teams are showing off here. Defensive players making one-handed catch, offensive receivers yeah. making one-handed catch. <laughs> these guys are just showing off over here. Yeah, there's some circus stuff going on out there, isn't there? And that will be the last act of the third quarter. Hamden once again has got these Admirals on the move. They're only down by six, having been played off the field in the first half. The third quarter has been all Amsterdam. They're on the move once again, but it's still Scotland leading by six. 
Well, we've had a bit of everything here in Amsterdam today, haven't we? And uh, not all of it good. Miss cues, we got them. And we've had them in bunches as well. We really have. And with that one, Alfonso Roundtree with a great interception from Clint Sterner. Then a blocked punt, Howard Clark doing the business for Scotland. But then another blocked punt as well, Wilson Thomas doing the business for Amsterdam. And I think we've got another miscue here as that ball's bouncing around on the ground. The snap from centre to quarterback was bodged. But, I mean, you know, you talk about miscues, we've had a blocked extra point, we've had two missed field goals as well, and, and um, it, it's been bizarre as we look, just look at the numbers. It's just been... Uh, how many of those would you say, though, are good plays by the other guys rather than just miscues? I would have to say the interceptions that we saw were good plays by the other guys. I mean, we see some great one-handed grabs, but, you know, you get down there and special teams plays a key part in the game. It's just so, too bad that they weren't able to come through when they needed it. Amsterdam getting away with one there. They'll go back on the ground. Downs is dragged down from behind, and he may lose another couple of yards there. Damien Gregory was there, so too was Jimmy McLean, and that's going to be third and uh, about 14 now for the Amsterdam Admirals. Gregory loses his name. Gregory loses his name, like you said, Nick, and they're not fooled anything by this draw. Both Gregory and McLean playing in the backfield with good penetration by the defense. There's nowhere for the running back to go. Well, the seamstress is going to be busy this week in Glasgow. Third down. Now, oh, here's a test of what Hamden can do. The, blitz. the four wide receivers came out. They've kept him protect protection, and they've got a man. Touchdown, is it? No, he's just gone out. Just gone out at the one-yard line, Chris Taylor. 33 yards. He's been kept so quiet in this ball game, but the protection was the key there, and Taylor got so open. Big mistake, but he has great protection, even with a blitz coming from the outside. You can't really see McLean coming from the outside, but he's got great protection, looks downfield and beats his own coverage. Big mistake by the safety. Hampton is truly happy, and Taylor just lost his foot and couldn't get in the end zone. I'm impressed by this guy's poise, what I've seen of him, Jabron Hampton. You think how edgy uh, Sterner was. Now here's Downs looking to try and go in. The second push, is he in? Our oh, flag has come in, touchdown. I think but will it might... stand up? I think the defense had too many guys on the field. Chris Downs is celebrating a three-yard touchdown run. Defense, 12 men. That penalty is declined. The result of the play is a touchdown. They had 12 guys on and they couldn't stop Chris Downs. Still couldn't stop the little man from getting in the end zone. You know, we said this crowd was being kept pretty quiet. Well, by, by the Claymores <laughs> playing this way, they let them get right back into it. And now the Claymores are sitting on their heels, and all the momentum is switched to the Amsterdam side. And Jimmy McLean is coming off the field, hopping on one leg. And that's their leading tackler. So things are just going from bad to disastrous here in this that second great, half. That'd be a big loss for the Claymores if he can't play. Silvio Diliberto to give Amsterdam its first lead of the night. They could do nothing right in the first half. Now it's Scotland that can do nothing right, and the Admirals have bounced back to take a one-point lead. Haygood is explosive, and they're trying to kick away from him, and Ian Smart's got it. Smart at the 13, looking to turn the corner, getting some blocks, and he's got the corner. And he's pushed out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Ian Smart's had his troubles returning punts, but looked pretty sure-handed there, a 22-yard return. Tom Arthur's coming back out. He's uh, going to try to get something doing for this Claymore's offense. Because they got to put some points on the board. Right now, they have to answer. If they don't, the Admirals are going to be so fired up, I don't think they'll be able to get back in this game. Well, Jack Bicknell really needs to be commended for showing some confidence in Tom Arthur and giving him a chance to play in adversity. But ever since Kurt Ains left the ball game, this Scotland offense has, has been going south in a hurry. Arthur is running for his life again. He's going to end up the leading receiver on this team if this carries on. Leading rusher carrying down the field. The leading rusher, carries, yeah. yeah. I know what you mean. <laughs> I don't really necessarily think that protection broke down as much as if it was just a good play by the defensive line. Austin gets around the corner of the tackle and he starts to apply pressure. Arthur really has nowhere to go with the ball. Second down and three. Scott Cooper back in the ball game. 
He's yet to register his first catch in this game. And he won't get it here as well because they go back on the ground and Amsterdam reading that one all the way. Galloway just ran into a brick wall. Claymore is just trying to do their, what they can to keep this defense honest and true. Don't want to sit there and throw all the time. We see McLean's out for the out, game. Out for the game. His ankle's through. That's, that's a knee. It's very disappointing. It looks like they're putting ice on his knee. Well, he's been the real linchpin of their defense, Jimmy McLean. Let's hope it's not serious for him. Third down. Play action. Ah, oh, he's got Scott McCready wide open, and McCready gets past the first guy. Derek Combs went for the strip, but all the way down to the 25. They needed a play from somewhere, and it's the Londoner, Scott McCready, that's found it. McCready's at the top of your screen. You see him isolated with Combs. And as he takes off, Combs is looking in the backfield with his own coverage. Wide open gap. You see Arthur with a nice pass. A nice pass, and McCready gets up the field for some extra yards. Combs goes for the strip. Scott McCready won a Super Bowl ring with the New England Patriots on their practice squad a couple of years ago. And he'll be looking to get back in the league. He is the leading receiver in NFL Europe this year, and they do go on the end around to Haygood this time, and Haygood is tripped up. That's real big hustle for one of the big guys up front there. Charles Austin, the Charles defensive Austin. leader for this Admirals team, makes a great play there. You know, we were talking earlier, if they're not going to respect the reserve, reverse, you got to give it to them. But I, I know Austin says, well, if you're going to test me like here, you see Austin right there. As he comes off the plate, he shows excellent hustle running down a receiver from the backside with a great angle. As Haygood was looking for his cut back there as well. So Austin, the former basketball player. That's some good footwork to see that in basketball. The swing pass out to McCready. McCready gets a block and is brought up just a couple of yards short of the first down. Nick, this is very interesting because Tom Arthur just takes his play into his own hands. He sees McCready's out there, out there isolated coverage. This was a run play. You see the offensive line coming down, and McCready just takes the ball on a quick swing pass and gets up the field. Good heads up play by Tom Arthur. Well, this is just what he needs, isn't it? A bit of time out there. Credit Jack McNell with giving his third string quarterback his head here in this game. Play action again, and Arth started to grow in confidence. Now he's found Marcus Helfman. They will move the chains once again. Five yards. First down. We take a look here, and Tom Martha is going to fake the boat, run to the left, and he comes back, and all this is sealed off. He's got plenty of room. He sees Helfman come open in the flat, gives him the ball, and Helfman turns it up for a positive game. It's just executing the simple stuff, isn't it? That's all it is. Well, over here, you have the simplest plays. You just have to make them work. Haygood is wide left, Bellamy's wide right, McCready is in the slot, Galloway is in the backfield. Bellamy's been quiet tonight so far. There's the pitch back to Galloway. He's going nowhere in a hurry. Walrus, I think, was the first guy there, but there was a lot of help as uh, Thomas Pittman came crashing in over the top of him as well. You know, another, another problem with offenses like this is when you have to depend on your receivers to seal blocks. You have a tall sweep on the left side, and there's too much penetration coming up in there with nowhere to run, nowhere for him to turn up the field and get it and get in the yards. Well, they're in the red zone, but the last two times they've been in the red zone, Scotland, they've missed kicks. Second down. After the look to throw, and he's got a man once again, and that's just bounced around, and Helfman has he got it in the second attempt, or has that been picked off? What's the ruling on the field? It's a turnover. <laughs> it looked like Kenny Jackson's come up with it as well. Helfman tried to get it at the second attempt, but Jackson was draped all over him and he's picked it off. Jackson comes up with a big play there. You see him sitting on Helfman and he just strips the ball out. He comes up and Helfman's trying to pull that ball in, and Jackson comes over the top and takes it away from for the interception. That is a sickener for Scotland. Another missed cue. Helfman fighting for it, and it never touched the ground. What smart heads-up play from Jackson? Ashita made a great ball, a great play on the ball. The middle linebacker for the Admirals made a great play on the ball and knocked that ball up in the air. Didn't give Helfman a chance to catch it really. 
He is a player, that Rakia Ishida, isn't he? We've talked about him before. He's, he's a hustler. He's one of those guys that just gets to the football. Made a great play there. Sterner back in the game. Not much doing on the ground there. None of these quarterbacks can complain that they're not being given their shot. Yeah, they're definitely giving their shot here. And then with the back to the end zone, I know they want to just try to come out and run the ball a little bit, take some time off this clock because their offense has been moving in the second half. And really, I think the Admirals are waiting for the, the Claymores to stop them on D. So second down. The red zone for Scotland has been a disaster tonight. Two missed field goals and now a turnover. They seem to find the right chemistry to get down there, but they can't seem to find a way to put it in. You need to run over the left side and run over your right tackle right here. Well, it will be second down of front, but we have a flag. Today, offense, number 11, five-yard penalty, second down. Well, he had to call a timeout to stop that last time in the first half, didn't he, uh, Clint Sterner, who struggled in the first half. This whole Amsterdam offense struggled in the first half. Then Gibran Hamden came in. And suddenly they had a lift. Sometimes it is just no more than a change, you know, just giving the, the offense a whole new fresh look. And it's been a tale of two halves. Now they're back in it in control of this ball game, but their backs are against the wall with the end zone right here. Second and long, Downs looking to bounce one to the outside, and he does. And that's an important play for Amsterdam. And Downs is starting to crank it out a little bit now as well. He's closing in on 100 yards. Another 17 yards will take him to 98 for the night. Chris Brown is going to be your pulling guard. He's going to leave the trip, leave the trap. Brown comes, he takes it up the block, has nothing but open field, makes the rest, makes the rest of the guys miss on the Claymore's defense. Just what Amsterdam needed. You never want to be in the shadow of your own goalposts. And he goes Downs again, and Downs has found a huge hole this time. Now he's over 100 yards. Dixon eventually pushing him out of bounds, but another big run by the man from the Oakland Raiders. You sure you're not going to come out of retirement? Well, I tell you what, I don't know about that, but I tell you what, <laughs> if this guy tells me again he doesn't like this one back attack after the day he's had again, I'm going to look at him and say something's wrong with him. <laughs> Chris Down takes it over the left-hand side again, and you see by the replay, once he gets through that little sliver right there, he's in the secondary. There is no one around him. A bad angle by the strong safety of the Claymore's defense. They've given him 40 yards and a first down. Scotland, he's going to take a rest. Mike Milan has checked into the ball game. Done it on the ground so far, and they'll keep it on the ground. And here's the big fullback, Mike Milan, plowing his way for 11 yards and another first down. And this Scotland defense is starting to look low on gas. They're, they're looking down, and I tell you what, Chris Downs is on the sideline getting a little breather. He's wanting to get back in this ball game because this defense is on his heels right now, Nick. 12 rushes, 131 yards with a touchdown. Very productive day for that guy, showing off to the Raiders and, and his big off in the old offensive tackle in the, in the booth up here. <laughs> Four wide receivers in. Milan still in the backfield. First down. This whole drive has been conducted on the ground, and it, they're going to keep it there as well. And Milan will pick up positive yardage once again. Give him another five. Second down and five. You know, you really take advantage of the box, and you see the Admirals are taking advantage of the box. And when I say the box, I'm talking about between the tackles. The Admirals were third in the, in the league with rushing yards with 86, but tonight they ran over 150 yards, showing a truly productive day. It takes all the pressure off your quarterback if he doesn't have to make that many throws. And it keeps that defense out there, and it wears them down. Now, second down and five. They stay in that formation. Downs is back in. There's the toss to Downs, and Downs turns the corner, and I think they're going to move the chains from where that was pushed out of bounds. What a drive this has been. You see, that's what I'm talking about. You get these big guys, you, you get these big guys in here in the trenches, and these guys are pushing these guys around now because the Claymores are playing on their heels. You see a hat on the hat. There is nothing but daylight for Downs as he comes to the outside. There is nobody around. You see excellent blocking right there by Horn, making a block downfield, getting his running back some running room. Receivers will always tell you, anytime you see a good running play, there's been a block from a receiver somewhere. First down, back on the ground. Now, where's Downs going to go this time? Still made something out of it. 
Ball's out. Ball's loose. Ball Fumble. fell out of there. He was trying to do too much, and he's coughed it up. How big is that? Yeah, I think it, it looked like Brown just lost touch of that ball. I don't know if he's having back spasms because that's what he was suffering from before. He gets up a little, little disgruntled, a little upset trying to get off the field. Well, just when you thought the Amsterdam Admirals had taken complete control of this game, Chris Downs tries to do a little bit too much, loses the football, but Andrews can't believe it. And I'm sure the Scottish Claymores can't believe it. They've got themselves back in it. You see Brown leading on the trap before, and he could have took that hole right there, but he missed it. And I don't, it looks like he just got a hand on the ball. I couldn't see the number of the guy who got a hand Cedric on the ball. Cedric Scott, number 95. Cedric Scott, and he made a big play right there. A great turnover in the red zone prevents these guys from getting in the score, keeps your team into it. Gerald Dixon with the recovery as well. So here come the Scottish Claymores from their own 14 yard line, still with Tom Arth. Play action. Arth will step up. He's got bodies all over him. He's running for his life. And then in the end, he does the sensible thing, just tucks it in that now and gets shoved over an advertising hoarding. Right there. That should have been a flag right there. But there isn't one. No, they didn't throw it. Tom Arth likes to live dangerously, doesn't he? He does. I didn't, he was looking there, scrambling around, and he, the protection just breaks down off of a seven-step drop. He's looking for a place to throw. Now he realizes he can't get this ball out. He's just trying to tuck it away. That's a well. It was yeah, real it was a contact there. It was a little contact. He should have hurdled it, but what the heck? Well, when you've been sitting on the bench for seven weeks, you're going to want to make the most of your opportunity. And here he is buying himself some time, and he steps up. Tries to find a receiver, and he's got his man, DeAndre Rubin, who will be close but just short of first down yardage. Don McGee with the push out. And now Tom Arth is just thinking, if I had a little bit more time, he's going to be able to get this ball downfield. But he shows us some nice footwork by eluding these guys in the pocket. Look at him. Elude one, give himself some room, makes a good throw. Positive yards, doesn't take a loss there. Close to the first down. It's actually Scott McCready, not DeAndre Rubin. Oh, okay. McCready having another good night here. This is, is this short? They're coming out to measure it. I talked to Scott McCready before the game, and he was saying he's very confident of getting back into an NFL camp this year. He's bounced around the Patriots system for a while, but you know, anytime you league, lead the league in receptions, teams are going to be taking a good look at you. Oh, you're definitely going to make yourself noticeable. He just wants to get a chance with any organization over in the States, and he's trying to make the best of his opportunities every time he touches the field like he's doing tonight. A third and short. Third downs have been the nemesis for this offense. Well, they picked it up a bit tonight. Claymores are struggling, but they put it over 50%, which is it's a, it's a great stat to have when you're that doing that well with third down conversions. But this an important one. This is where you want one of those big offensive lines that can just power it out. And unfortunately, they don't have it worked into their system where they can run a two-back attack or the power running game. They really have to play within what they have, and they bring two tight ends to keep it between the tackles. With Maurice Hicks in the backfield, Haygood wide left, but Creedy wide right. Maybe they try a quarterback sneak here. Well, Arf loves to run, we know that. Big play. Arf will go for it. He needed a couple of inches. It looks like he got it. And he looks like it. he just about got it, but no more. We didn't hear much from Charles Alston in the first half, but he's, uh, fairly quiet, he's but picked it up in the second. Yeah, he's been, but he's going to be one of those playmakers that's just going to buy his time. He's looking for an opportunity. And to be honest, you know, the Claymores haven't really been throwing that much for him to get a chance to get in the backfield. The former basketball player, a pathology major as well. All around good athlete there. First down. Off looking has a lot of time just dumps it over the middle that was a high one Maurice Hicks did a great job pulling that one in that was another one of those balls that just seemed to be floating into just no man's get land. away from the quarterback just a tad bit but a good grab by Maurice Hicks and pull it in and get another first down keep these chains moving yeah the man from San Francisco made his quarterback look good here Arth has good protection we see the cup in front of him he's got great protection and see he sees Hicks come right open the middle makes a little bit too much of a touch but at least Hicks pulls it in for a first down at the 35 Less than four minutes remaining. A one-point ball game. Arf oh, drills that one. That was bouncing around all over the place. Don McGee was there to break it up once again. Got a little bit of scuffle between the big horses down there. McGee makes a great play, but there's a little bit going on with the offensive line. They're starting to get a little antsy. Tempers are starting to flare a little bit. Well, the clock's a factor now as well. Scotland have their timeouts intact, but 
It's been one of those games you wouldn't want to risk putting everything on a field goal, that's for sure. Well, no, you don't want to do that, but like I said, to take a look here at Nick's at the bottom of your screen, he's getting into a 2 old lineman, takes one, pulls him down, should have been a penalty, that when should. I noticed. The officials missed one there. Helfman, who coughed one up earlier, but hangs on this time, and picks up eight yards. McGee once again in on the tackle. Now, there's no bigger test for your offense than what you got here. With the clock winding down in the fourth quarter, the Claymores have got to make something happen to get some points on the board so they can try to win the game. So this is good clock management by Arthur. At least you, you were hoping that we see as the clock goes down to the end of the game, it will be. Yeah, Tom Arthur has been given an extended workout here in week eight, having sat on the bench through seven weeks. Jack McNeil giving him his head. Let's see if he can be a winner for the Scottish Claymores or whether Amsterdam will be able to hold firm. Arthur looking to keep this drive going. There's nowhere to go. Arthur's running for his life again. Well, he's not boring, is he? No, he's not. <laughs> he's going to keep it exciting. And he's playing on. He's playing with fire there when he keeps trying to set up with those defensive linemen on his heels. What was that quote earlier? When the dog chases the traffic, he doesn't live long. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tom Arth came in for Kurt Ames and has had quite a run out. Mixed results, to say the least. Two interceptions. Yeah, not a lot of passes for both quarterbacks, but these guys are showing their mobility off with the way things are breaking down. Well, obviously, Arth's numbers rushing. He's probably got more on with his legs than he has with his arm. Still in their own territory, and we're inside three minutes. Play action. Arth just rolls, finds his possession guy once again. McCready is down at the 40. Another 13 yards first down. Will he pile on the tackle? McCready pads his stats. Arth keeps things moving. We see Arth moving, moving. He, uh, he stays under control. Takes a nice pass into McCready right in the crease of the zone for a positive gain on the first down. Well, if you're looking for a possession receiver, this is your man. Eight catches for 98. Here comes the blitz. On first down from the Amsterdam 40, just over two minutes remaining. Maurice Hicks gets the pitch back. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, but no more. It was read all the way by Thomas Pittman, the former Scottish Claymore. And that, I think, will take us to the two-minute warning. And how finely balanced is this one? Amsterdam leading by a point. Scotland driving is a two with warning. two minutes left. It's going to be quite a finale here at the Amsterdam Arena, and we'll be back to enjoy it in just a moment. Well, Jack McNeil's Claymore's got some offense last week. That was a losing effort. They've definitely got some offense this week as well. Is it going to be another losing effort? They're down by one, having, tr having led 16-3, but they have the ball with two minutes remaining. They have a second down and long at the 40-yard line of the Amsterdam Admirals. And the way this game has gone, you don't want to put it in the hands of a kicker, any kicker, because we've had so many misfires on special teams tonight. Can Tom Arth lead them to victory? Can Amsterdam hold firm defensively? Second down and long. Arth is under pressure. But Rasmussen almost got him. And there's a flag comes in because Arth went pass. flying. And at last, there is a, a Big call. Mistake. Big Clint mistake. Mitchell is going to hear his number called. Arth definitely went down after he'd thrown the ball and they'll throw the flag on that every single time, but that's huge from Mitchell. Huge mistake by Mitchell there. I know he, he definitely doesn't want to put that on film. It's just a matter First of frustration, foul, you see. Roughing the passer, number 98 defense, 15-yard penalty, automatic first down. Yes, and then costly penalty. This late in the game, you still shouldn't do that, no matter how frustrated you are. Jeff's little brother, that was expensive. Rob Hart warming up. It might be his night yet. A man from Southampton. That penalty has put him on the edge of Rob Hart's field goal range. 43 yards from where that ball is. Less than two minutes. First down, Scotland. The give is to Hicks. And Hicks looks to turn the corner and gets down to the 20. Jerry Schumacher was there on the stop, along with Jason Perry. Time to call a timeout here. Trying to conserve some of that clock. Well, they got all three. Yeah. Timeout, Scotland. That is their first charge timeout. It's a third. 
the blitz comes Hicks gets the carry and that is well sniffed out by the Amsterdam Admirals what a play from Kenny Jackson read it all away they'll Hurry lose up. three yards and in this context that is a huge Amsterdam. play because that's, that's putting them right out. to the edge of their it field goal situation and with both Walrus. kickers struggling like we said earlier it's a toss-up anytime out there well Rob Hart you would think would be the kicker the Englishman but they've also got another guy that they could turn to as well Mark Jensen but he hasn't converted a field goal all year and he had one of those I think miscues earlier when he they've hunted the punter couldn't get the snap down and on the last field goal with the Claymore's tried when it didn't go through and they got it they had to came up with a flare situation 43 yards from where that ball is spotted now is it going to be a first down Will it be Rob Hart? Will it be Mark Jensen? I'm really surprised by Coach McNeil. I thought he would give Tom Art the leeway to open up the offense a little bit, especially in that situation. Try to read a blitz look, and Amsterdam has to know that they're probably going to run it They're probably going to play it safe. Now that backs them up and puts them right on the edge, like you said. They need to get to just past the 16-yard line. This may be the biggest third down of the ball game. Play action. The blitz is coming again. Schumacher can't get him. Ah, oh, thinks end zone. Oh, no, oh, Vega just yes. couldn't bring it in. He was wide open as well, and it was over his head. He's 5'11", Herb Haygood. If he's 6'1", it's touchdown Scotland. Tom Arth has a wide open Haygood in the end zone, and he just can't get the ball to him. And now it falls to Rob Hart. You talk about excitement. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Rob Hart, the barefoot Englishman, can be the hero with a 43-yard field goal. The snap is good. The kick is on its way. It's got the distance, That's and good. Scotland have got the lead. And the man from Southampton has put his team in front. What a game, what a game. The only bad thing is it's come with 124 left on the clock. There is a still a ball game to be won here. But when you're one and six, any motivation that you can possibly get, you put your team ahead, now your defense can go out there and you just have to depend on your team to play. This is what you have to do. This is what you pay your defensive coordinator for to go out there and stop these guys. It's all to play for. The Amsterdam Admirals still have a timeout to play with. That's a shallow kick that is fielded at the 16-yard line by Derek Combs, who's looking for a seam, and he is brought crashing down. That was a tremendous special teams play there from Jens Pedersen, the Swedish linebacker, who just zeroed in on that one. But they've got the ball to the 36-yard line, and they're going with Sterner. They come in with Sterner, and he's been eyeballing his receivers all day. So now, if there's any time that you want your shutdown corners to rise to the occasion, this is it. Well, the coaches have done their thing. They can only just watch and suffer. Scotland have 12 men on the field. They don't have enough now. Well, Howard Clark just got off. Sterner feels some pressure, and he's got rid of it. And he's got a wide-open Mike Milan. And Milan... Stays in bounds. Sterner's getting his boys lined up with a hurry up offense. Don't want to use any more timeouts here. He got plenty of time. A gain of 11. First down. They're close to midfield. Is there more drama in this game? We've had more than our fair share already from the shotgun. Sterner, first down. Straight over the middle. And oh, it's dropped. He had a man wide open. And Carlos, or rather, uh, excuse me, Tony Donald could not. Bring it in. This is so disappointing here. He comes open on the second level, wide open, and still can't make this catch. Loses his footing, might, and the ball goes right through his hand. No excuse. Donald has to come up with that ball. 47 seconds left. That was one of those catches you've got to make. Wilson Thomas is wide left. Chris Horn wide right from the shotgun again. Sterner has some time he's got Milan once again and Milan is thinking about where he's going to go and that might have been a mistake because he's been brought down in bounds well no he got out of bounds because it looks like they stopped the clock if I'm not mistaken they stopped the clock with 39 seconds yes they did they did you're right I thought he'd been brought down inside so he just about managed to get out of bounds 
This was let's close. Take, let's take a look. It's awfully close. It looks like that knee. Oh, I don't know. It's kind of, it can go both ways, but yeah. the, the line judge sees him as out of bounds and stops the clock for him. Third and four. 40 seconds left. They're in Scotland territory. Stoner is hit and goes crashing down. What a moment for a big sack. Gavin Walls was there. Alan Harper was there. I'm an offensive lineman who doesn't like to make light of these situations, but Gavin Walls makes an outstanding play. Timeout called by Amsterdam as well. This could be the moment for Scotland. Gavin Wall left Mario Branch standing in his shoes. He spins on the inside and hits Clint Sterner up under his chin. Celebration time. If there's one thing a game like this proves, all these people who say, oh, end of season doesn't matter. Well, tell that to the players. Tell Absolutely. that to Gavin Walls. Well, these guys, like you said, are fighting for jobs not only in the States, but trying to pad their resume. The guys that are allocated are trying to make their teams look good and show, the, show off their stuff, and the free agents are trying to find a home. On the bottom line, these guys want to win. That's Absolutely. what it's all about. Absolutely. Whatever level you're playing at, whatever stage of the season, you want the win. However you want to look at it, you want to go home having some feeling of pride. You want to say that you were able to beat a team. Amsterdam and their game tonight comes down to this. Fourth down, they've got to get to Scotland's 42-yard line. Sterner is under pressure. They're after him. Damien Gregory's trying to get him. Sterner's going for the first down himself, and he's brought up short, I believe. He looks it's like short. he's a yard it's short. short. They may call for the measurement. I thought he got a generous spot anyway, but even from there, I don't think he's made it. No, it doesn't look like it from up here. <laughs> but you'd want commitment. Look at the... Sterner could have done no more than that. No, he couldn't have done anything. There was anything he'd do. Protection breaks down in front of him. You see a lot of the Claymore is a little bit upset with the spot. Well, it was generous. I thought it was a real generous spot. And I tell you what, where that ball's been spotted, he may just have got this. It's going to be awfully close. My first thought was he's a yard short. Then they've given him a, a bit more progress, and then I think the spot has been even more generous on that. If he does, if he does get a, get this spot, it's short. It's short. Game over. Claymore's win. And the Scottish Claymore's, <laughs> who found so many ways to lose this season, finally have found a way to win. So Clint Sterner just a few inches short, and that meant the Claymore's could take a knee and run out the clock to get the win. So the Claymores get only their second win of the season in their 100th game in franchise history, and the Admirals' quest to get their first winning season since 1998 looks to be beyond them once again. This is how the standings are looking at the moment, but don't forget Frankfurt played Berlin on Saturday night, and they can join the Thunder in World Bowl 12 if they can beat Rick Lance's team. On Sunday, the Fire are in Cologne to do battle with the Centurions. The Fire are still in with a World Bowl chance mathematically, but realistically, their prospects are slim.